All right, you guys, so like, share, subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you guys get all the updates whenever we release video content on the channel. Shouts out to the Lions Den community. Salute to my brother, A Weapons. He rep midlife music. Make sure y'all following us on social media on our Instagram. Also, make sure that you guys check out our Facebook channel, uh, facebook.com backslash ticket TV. All these links are going to be in the description box below. You guys can also catch our podcast show. Make sure y'all subscribe to our podcast show. We'll have all the hidden content that you guys didn't see from our podcast show. Uh, so all of the links will be pinned below. Salute to everybody who donates to the stream. And we're going to get ready to get started with this stream today now. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Much love, honor, respect, and appreciation. Uh, kind of appreciate everybody hopping on in here, man. Um, as we get into this tonight, I want to talk about um, this disturbing video I came across today uh, in my in my timeline from a channel that I'm subscribed to. Uh, and I could not believe when I saw this video notification come up on my channel today. And uh, I knew this video was going to cause some waves around the community uh, because of the recent situation that's going on. LeBron James have addressed that. Uh, you know, the Genie Bus situation, if you guys don't know. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to the podcast show. Hey, shout out to all the new subscribers, man. We almost had 2,000 subscribers on the podcast. If y'all have not done so, click the link pinned at the top and subscribe to the podcast show. It's pinned at the top of the chat, but let's get to it, right? So, and we got to really get into this and talk about this. So, uh, you know, and 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 again, uh, oh, shout out to Isaiah Thomas for getting back in the NBA. Everybody doubted Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas, salute to you for getting back in the NBA, your determination. He just got a 10-day contract with the Phoenix Suns. So shout out to little Isaiah Thomas for getting back in the NBA after everybody told him to quit. People said his career was over, he should quit. I'm happy he went back to the G League and got back in the NBA. So shout out to Isaiah Thomas right now, breaking news. Isaiah Thomas just uh, re-signed in the NBA. He just signed a 10-day contract with the Phoenix Suns. Hopefully he can last with them for the rest of the season. But let me get back to this. Um, so we all saw the situation with LeBron James recently with Jeannie Buss. Linda Rambis at the Lakers game. Um, I saw some of the content creators on YouTube, some of the brothers, talking about that situation and just, just talking about what they saw and talking about what was being reported. And it was funny to me how these dudes were destroyed. Uh, All right, y'all, Gilgrey, come up here, man. Y'all smash that like button, man. Y'all smash that like button. It's Gilgrey, come up here, man. Smash that like button, man. No chill. Yeah. No chill. What's good, boy? Nothing much, nothing much. What's up with you, man? Man, these dudes on YouTube be trying to troll you and talk shit because they don't agree with your opinions. I'm, I don't roll with that. I don't have to agree with everything you say, brother, but I'm not finna demonize a grown ass man for having his opinion. You feel me? Oh, I mean, that's the part of uh, YouTube and content, right? You know? It's, right, you bro. Know. Hey, I, I think people take this shit way too serious, bro. Like, your name is No Chill Gill. So you go, it's go, I mean, bro, the man's name is No Chill. So what you think you're going to get? You think you're going to get something dumbed down? No, he's No Chill Gill. If you don't like what a man say, you can go watch something else. That's the beauty of having options of, of watching different channels. Now, look, I'm, I'm going to say this to you, bro. Now, I totally disagree with you on the Michael Jordan thing. And I, listen, I just wanted to know, I just want to know why is the media, the mainstream media, all of them, silent about an uh, accusation against a major figure like LeBron James when you have a dude that's working on a national network like ESPN that's saying the stuff that he's saying, bro. He making these allegations, bro, mm -hmm. and there ain't no ain't no backlash. There ain't no there ain't no oh. Could be, now we watch baseball, 
people made allegations about Barry Bonds. He never failed a test when he was playing, but mm -hmm. they, the media asked him about it every single day, and the list goes on. But, Gil, I see one thing. If you ask about LeBron James, bro, you're going to get demonized. If you ask why he's not, uh, you know, uh, speaking out against the, this this situation, uh, what you got on that, man? Okay, okay. look, since 2004, um, the NBA drug testing is a lot different than it was before. Like, when I first came into the NBA, I got drafted 2001, right? We had one test at training camp, right? October 1st, first day of training camp, everybody got tested, right? Mm -hmm. The very next day, whole the whole hotel floor from that day moving forward smelled like weed, anything they wanted to do, mm -hmm. right? So if you wanted to be on any kind of substance, before 2004, you only got tested once. So, was there players that I knew doing steroid? Yeah, F a fucking course. When you're talking about trying to make an NBA team, right? For the most part, the 14th, 15th man that's trying to make the team or stay on the team, they're there to what, be brute type of guys, force type of guys, so they need strength, right? So if you look at those early 2000, 2001 teams, for the most part, they was only in the league to play against Shaq West Coast four times a year or East Coast two times a year, right? Mm -hmm. Back then, it was more of a brutal game, so those guys were on it, right? But there was no test after October 2nd. 2004, right. there became four tests, right? First person to get busted was, I think, Birdman, right? right. Uh, he got suspended two years. We don't actually know what he was on, right? Because... Right the NBA don't actually give you the exact thing someone was on, right? At first we think it was, you know, we thought it was cocaine. Uh, most most likely it probably would have been some type of substance that they had banned at that time. So after 2004, it's doable to probably pee on, be on PEDs or the PEDs. It is probably doable, but now you're talking about six times a year, they can test you randomly, plus someone's an Olympic. So it'd be hard for an Olympic type of player to really be on it without getting caught. It's but, possible, but, but it's hard. You're talking but, about a guy like LeBron who got accused of it before, which they investigated. He's been accused three or four times already. When, when noise like this comes about, trust me, he's going through drug testing. 1,000 percent. If you score 55 or more in the NBA today, they're taking blood after the game. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. My thing is this, bro. But why is dudes being able to get away like Chell Sonnen, bro, who's still working at ESPN right now? How is he able to get away with openly saying that we got the same dealer? He's saying that on an open – he's saying that repeatedly on open podcast networks, and there ain't no backlash, bro. Because the, the backlash is still an investigation. They're still going to investigate LeBron again. They're going to go through all his tests, which is what, a hundred and by now he's done 120 tests plus FIBA testing. So they're going to go test it just in case. But trust me, the dude who's saying it is going to get hit also. He's going to get hit. They're not going to do it publicly because the, once they hit him publicly and go back publicly, it becomes a very public thing. Hey, y'all go subscribe to Gil's other channel, too. If Y'all already probably already subscribed to uh, Gil's arena, but go subscribe to his other channel, too. No Chill, uh, no Chill Gil is on uh, right here on YouTube, you guys. I'm going to put the link in the, in, the, uh, in the comments as soon as it's over with. But uh, so, yeah, man, so look. So now, again, then you have the situation with, like I said, man, you got these other networks and stuff like this, right? Mm -hmm. That, okay, cool. They not running with this story right here, this individual story. But they did say one thing. Skip talked about one thing, and he said something about the inner circle and, and like, the FBI investigation. They cleared LeBron James, but they mm -hmm. said that it was people on his inner circle that had admitted to using and being linked to PEDs, man. So now, okay. what do you say to all the people that saying, well, damn, man, if you got all these people that's linked around you to PEDs, like, you know what I'm saying, there has to be some kind of coalition. How is all these people linked around you, the trainer? Your, your boy Randy, all these other dudes, but nothing is nothing on you. But but that's okay. But that's the that's the thing. If someone has already said 
the people who's done it. He has been tested too. He's been cleared. It's hard to keep going against something if the higher the higher ups are saying, "Damn, we tried to get him, but he's been cleared." Everybody arrest around him has been busted, but him. How do you keep fighting that fact? We can keep saying, "Oh yeah, your friends uh, was it friends of a feather flock together." We can keep saying it all we want, but if he is being cleared by the FBI and these people, how do we keep just saying, "Fuck what y'all doing? Fuck your testing." We say he's guilty because everybody around him is doing it. We don't know why they're doing it. Well, they, well, okay, well, let me say this. I'm going to say this to you then. So then people will say this. Like you said, like, um, Jordan played all 82 games in year 20. And, I mean, and, excuse me, when he was age 40 years old, 39 and 40, which is true. He played 80 and then 82 games his last year. That's true. But here's the thing. He did have time. He did retire two times. He didn't play straight all the way through his whole career. And then it was a noticeable difference in his athleticism, in his game. Those last years with the Wizards, bro, and you know this getting well. He couldn't even jump, really. He, what, he was. They called him Floor Jordan. He was mid-range, uh, mm -hmm. pull-up J fadeaway. It wasn't like now, the reason why you have a lot of people speculating, they saying LeBron James out here running through dudes, running mm -hmm. faster than dudes that's 21 years old, jumping mm -hmm. higher than dudes that's 21 years old, and this man's at year 21, and it don't look like he's going to slow down for the next two or three years. People saying that's unusual. We ain't never seen nothing like that before. And then you have other bodybuilders, Gil, people who in the industry who are saying, oh, he definitely have to be on something to be looking like that. Him, The Rock, and guys like this. What you say about that? Yeah, but that's still opinion, right? These bodybuilders, that's their, their opinion that he's taking something. The, the facts right now is he's been cleared. Now, when I bring up Jordan, I'm bringing it up as this. We know... Jordan played at that age, right? Right. We know Jordan didn't take care of his body like LeBron, um, like LeBron did. We right. know he gambled all night. We right. know he smoked his cigar every goddamn day, right? right. We know that. Um, he averaged 20 doing it. Him being reckless, he averaged 20 in our league. And there was no question there. So a guy who's taking care of his body, doing all these things, only averaging five more points. How is that this? Oh, okay, so well, now watch how I'm gonna hit you now, Gil. So Gil, you've been out the game for how many years now? About, about what? 13, about 12, 13? Right. You can go back to the NBA right now and average 14. Fuck no. No, Gil, Gil, mm -hmm. give you six months training. You can go in the NBA right now and average 15 in this NBA. In this mm -hmm. NBA, you, no you chill, Gil. You're you gonna give you me your knees? fifteen right now. You, are you gonna give me your knees? The same one. I don't have to give you my knees. I'm saying the same one. I watched Bean give Bean and them sixty in the Staples. I watched you and you went to midcourt and took a bow. Yes, that Gilbert Arenas could go average fifteen in this NBA right now. No, no, this, no. To me, this NBA, bro, and LeBron just said it. The defenses are weaker. The game is more open to score. Mm -hmm. The game is more friendlier to how you played. Versus when you played, the defense was still being played at a high level, still okay. hand checking, still physicality. So you can go right now with, I would say, three to four months of training. If you really wanted to get into it and train, you can go right now and average 14 points to 15 points in the league, Gil. Don't say you can. I know no, you okay. can. Okay, so but, 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 see, you're fighting against both sides of the field. If this game is easier, Right, it's easier. So let's right. take the, let's take the Wizards Jordan, where we had a zone, much more defense, and put the same Wizard Jordan today. How right. much is the average? I mean, with these guys, bro. I mean, Mike. I, I have Mike average around, but still, that's not the point. The point no, is, no, no, no. You have to give me an but, average. But, but Gil, here, here's the point though. Your game was versatile. No, you, you, you had to J. No, you had to, no, but you had the three ball. You mm -hmm. also, at that time, back then, you had the first step. Okay, let's say your step got way slower. Okay, cool. You still had other ways you could affect the game scoring the basketball. You wasn't a one-trick pony where you can only shoot or only drive. You can shoot the ball. So the fact that you can shoot the ball at the level you shot the ball, making a difficulty of shots that you made, you didn't need the athleticism at that point to get off and do what you did. You didn't even need the athleticism then to really put. You weren't out there yamming on dudes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You was you you was you was the, one of the more skillful players in the NBA. So all I'm saying is is that your skills, you know what I'm saying, and your ability to put the ball in the basket from the perimeter, to me, as long as you can hit shots at the level that you were hitting shots, you can still average 14 points in the game a day. 
which we talking about we ain't talking about can lebron james average 20 we're saying that look you're looking at a guy that's 40 years old almost or that is 40 39 40 that's out running 21 year olds out jumping 21 year olds chase down blocking head damn near hitting the rim still and don't look like he's gonna slow down okay and again if that old Jordan who didn't take care of his body can come into today's game and average, and you was probably about to say 30, then how is it that amazing for LeBron? If Jordan, who didn't take care of his body, can come into today, that wizard Jordan, and average 30, then what LeBron doing is still second behind what LeBron would have did. Well, I'm, well, I'm just saying, the I'm difference, saying how he's what doing. What you're missing about LeBron is he is all of 6'10", 240 still fast so when he does go in the lane that does not have the shaquille o'neal's the lonzo all of those guys with those bigger bodies and he gets to run in the lane he's still stronger than everybody so there's you, really like he still would be second to and that's why i mentioned jordan so you can see how far lebron is from Jordan in a sense. If we can take the 40-year-old Jordan who didn't take care of his body, who smoked cigars every night, who partied and gambled every day, and we put him in today's game and he's going to average 30, then what LeBron doing ain't really that fucking talented. He's just bigger than everybody. Man, I'm, I'm talking more so along the lines of the athleticism. Now, now athletic, so here's athleticism. Did you see, you can Google right now. Google uh Vince Carter vertical at 40, at 40 years, old. years old. I already know Vince going to gym. He don't even need to stretch. 40 years okay. old, he going, he windmilling. So he had a 44 inch vertical. By the time he was 40, he was still out jumping a 20 year old Andrew Wiggins. But he wasn't playing the minutes though, Gil. But what I'm saying is just think about what I'm saying. At that age not taking care of his body this what this type of athleticism was still doing these Gil. guys these guys the michael jordans right the zach levines the right. lebron james you can look at jason richardson right his right. jason richardson might he's still in the big three his head touched the rim right he's 43 years Bro, old i just saw vin baker dunking in a video at 53 years old i, I see yeah. him dunking you know, so for the most part, these guys, they just themselves, the, just themselves in their body, when they come normal, when they get back to being normal, their normal is still 42 inch vertical, right? Like when you look at LeBron James early and look at him now, you can tell he is slower. You can tell he doesn't jump as high. But, but he's out, but how's he still out running and out jumping? The young cats that's in the league. That's the question we asking, bro. Is he is he is he is he keeping up with DeAndre Fox? No. Is he is he keeping up with Westbrook? No, he's not keeping up with all the rest of them guys. He out running though. But look, look, look who the rest of the guys are. Are they even fast? Come on, bro. Like most of the three men, what he of course he's gonna outrun Kevin Durant. <laughs> right. No, I'm saying no. I'm, I'm saying though, but if you're looking at these other guys that's in the league, I'm saying like the younger guys that's on the other teams. He's still out running and out jumping those guys, bro. But the, is he? But when you're six ten, are you really out jumping anyone? The man hit, bro. Do you see the dunks that LeBron's still doing? Yeah. yeah. And, and let, let me ask you this: How in the hell is he able to one night say I got an ankle injury, and the next night he out here tomahawk jamming like it ain't nothing? Listen, I can tell you this: this is for sure. But they they banned it. They banned it. They banned this. There was a um. There was a uh, o, o, OVS, OV something. There was a drug when I first came into the league, and it's banned now. When I first came into the league in 2001, right? there was there was something that they, D, D, DMSO, it's called DMSO. Um, they'll rub Tylenol on it, and then they'll rub it, they'll put it on a pad and put it on your ankle and mm -hmm. little shit like that, right? Right. And you you were back the next day. It was called like VMS, v, D, DMS, something called DMSO. It was banned like in 2003 or when the drug testing started. But like if you got hurt, twisted your ankle, they'll rub that on you. You keep it on and nigga, you was back the, the next day. But listen, when someone tweaks their ankle, we don't know how long they out. Big Cheese, you can say cat, but all you do is just Google. Don't you? I'm, you're pretty sure you're yeah, Google. Yeah, hey, y'all, like I said, y'all. No, no, no. Gotta... All you have to do is just Google. It's called, it's called DMSO.
Bro, I, I, hey, bro, listen. I respect like, listen, you. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now. If he does on YouTube. Give me on YouTube. Huh? Yeah, I know a lot of these cats on YouTube is, is trolls sometimes, bro. They don't respect the work that guys put in. They don't know your story. They don't know where you came from and how you came up. And and some guys, they, all they see, bro, is like the finished product or after you played in the league and earned all the money and stuff like that. They didn't see all the things that went into you guys preparing for the league. Now, I do want to step on this conversation with you real quick. So mm -hmm. that's why I feel a way, bro, when you and Kwame go at it because y'all was teammates. Like, bro. Y'all was teammates, y'all. You know how that be, Gil. I played pro overseas 16 years. You know how it be when you got a teammate, y'all on the road, boom, y'all chopping it up. You might have some issues or beef with somebody. I feel like a lot of these dudes on the internet try to drive a wedge in between brothers that may have an issue or a situation. I feel like, bro, you both of you dudes earn millions of dollars doing what y'all do. I feel like you have done great in everything that you've done. I don't even think you getting, and I don't think they do this, I don't think they give black fathers enough credit for doing a great job. And I don't think, I don't haven't seen nobody giving you the 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 love they should give you for what you have done with your son that's tearing up the, the high school basketball ranks right now. And I, I, I've i been watching him. I haven't been saying too much. I've said something lately, but I've been watching him and I feel like he got a chance to be what you was and even higher when he goes to the league. Cause I feel like that's where he's headed. The kid can, he can absolutely flat out play stud. You understand what I'm saying? But nobody gives us credit for that. And I don't like when they try to tear us apart as brothers and stuff like that. Because y'all, to me, you and Kwame Brown, y'all can have disagreements and stuff and still not have no crazy beefs and stuff like that, man. Because a lot of these people on the internet, they'll they'll hype that shit up like the Biggie and Tupac situation. And then one, once one of you two dudes crash out, Gil, then everybody going to sit back, watch the fireworks, and act like they ain't had nothing to do with that shit, bro. No, no, that, that's cool. Listen, I don't have no problem with Kwame Brown. Like, like listen, it's, at the end of the day, it's always a teammate over... You know, regular, but you know, regular casuals, right? right. Um, you know, I, I came on the internet, you know, defending some of the lies he was telling, and then from there it just became entertainment, right? right. Like, but I wasn't going to choose anyone over Kwame. Like, if Kwame really was like, "Yo, this is what I want to do," I would have done it because I've been to war with him, right? Right. That's a, that's that's my teammate. I've been to war with him, so that's why it's e it was easy for me to just go and leave. Like I didn't. I, I was done. I had fun. Now I was I was moving on. So there was no point of just keep going back and forth. Like I had my fun. I'm out. No hard feelings. Right. I don't take the shit personal. Right. It's not okay. A personal so you, thing. So it's, that's it's, how you feel. Like so. Okay. So if I'm getting you right, is that how you feel? Like people should. Uh, that's how you feel. Like. Kwame should look at it like he shouldn't take it personal when people say things about him. Is that how you feel when you because you said you don't take it personal? Do you think that he like, for example, when he came on YouTube, it was because he he felt like everybody was coming at him, which was true. I mean, he had Stephen A. Smith talking about him for all those years, bro. Man, ain't say nothing. We never heard from Kwame Brown. So mm -hmm. Kwame Brown comes on YouTube, goes in because people are saying his name and everybody get mad at him and start going extra hard on him. I never understood that. Then you you and Kwame start getting into it. I never understood that. I'm like, damn, how the hell they start start getting into it? So do you feel like that uh, you know he should just let people say what they're gonna say? You played in the league, you made all your money that you made. Boom, just you know what I'm saying. Don't even worry about it. How, how do you feel? I, I, I listen when Kwame first um, spoke, it was it was justifiable, right? You know, right. Um, because Stack was a teammate of his also. So, but he wasn't you know, saying nothing, Gil. I know, but that's what I'm saying. So Stack was a teammate, and he's watching Stack jab at him two times. Right. Right. You jabbed at him at a at a uh, at an episode with uh, Jenny Bus, and then uh, the episode I was on, he jabbed at him again. Right. right. And I think at that point, you know, Kwame had enough of it. Right. And right. then from there, once Kwame went off. From there, all the all the shit that he was holding in for the last 20 years, he was just unleashing, right? right. You can't tell someone how to react, right? Mm -hmm. That that is the that's the thing. You can't tell someone how to react. So you can't fault Kwame for how he reacted. Right. You know, even with Stephen A. And Stephen say, Well, I never would personal with you. I never did. You can't tell the man how to react. After that right. happened for all those years, because like, like for real, you know that, Gil, you know, like the media can fuck with you. Like they did it with you in your situation, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, 
they they over to me they over blew all that shit in your situation like when you told the story i heard you actually tell like the real story one time and i was like damn the media made that shit seem like it was a whole completely like different vibe a different type of situation versus you when you told the story it sounded more believable about what happened with your situation you know what i'm saying versus mm -hmm. the media they can make it seem like a whole different situation and then try to like blackball you or get you ran out of the league you know what i'm saying bro mm -hmm. and that's all i'm saying like with kwame i felt like damn bro they like tried to go extra on dude and if you do look at his situation it ain't it ain't gonna be easy for a player coming in you playing under michael Jordan with michael jordan at that time he's coming back he gonna he gonna get the ball you going in as a rookie they're not gonna be playing through you they're not gonna be giving you the ball you got all these vets on your team you're not gonna be getting that much burn but you got all these expectations when you got drafted and people i don't think people really looked at it and i didn't even look at it that way at first until kwame explained his side my whole thing is bro i hope y'all two can come to a point man where y'all can link up and and just you know what i'm saying not even if y'all gotta work together bro but i mean on the on the course of for the for the for the for the for the culture man of basketball bro because i don't want to see I, I got i got respect for you and i got respect for him i got respect for you just because of what i've heard about you from other guys that i've known that's in the league that's hall of famers that spoke about your work ethic and stuff like that when you came in the league and people will talk all this shit online they don't know the shit that you went through that i heard you went through that you really you know work for this shit to, to, to get where you're at and then like i said another thing i appreciate what i see about you bro is that you let your son be your son. You you let him come up. You I saw you when you was pushing him in his workouts and pushing him to be better. And you're watching that growth. And I respect that, bro. He ain't dead. He ain't in jail. He ain't doing nothing stupid. So I think people take that stuff a little too serious when you online. You know what I'm saying? Just giving your opinion. Now, some stuff you give your opinion on, you might be serious about. I know some stuff you're trolling about. Like, everybody's on you lately because of what you said about the uh the euro players what would you have to say about that about the reaction everybody saying you're crazy for what you said about okay, the okay. Uh, so with the kwame with the you know with the kwame thing is you know we remember we're drafted in the same class right right so back when we came in you know we was rookies and we had to you know do the things that the veterans told us to do right the only the only thing that saved me is i didn't have michael jordan as my boss right yeah. I didn't have someone that was Michael Jordan and the boss plan. So I'm pretty sure whatever Kwame wanted to say, he had to hold his tongue. He couldn't mm -hmm. do the things he wanted to do. And the more you hold your tongue, the more docile you get. Right? Right. Right? Because you can't do the things you want to do to show people that you are a man or a young man. Right? So you can't act the way he can. He could never act the way I acted. Right? Right. Right eventually eventually the, the the longer you sit you know quiet you just accept it so the kwame they see now wasn't the kwame then but this guy was holding in all that frustration and anger so when, when he does go at somebody i i don't judge it because I didn't have to, I didn't have to, after I get traded and then Stephen A goes on there and says what he says, I didn't have to hold that type of, I didn't have to hold that inside me for all these years. When, right. when, when he's going at them colleges and Stephen A's is just randomly mentioning them, that's affecting him. So I can't even judge him on what he's going to say back. Bro, I like, think that's, co -host. That's, that's his thing. I can't. Yeah. Your co-host said something about that before. Kmart. Kmart mm -hmm. came out and said he had to step to him in Puerto Rico because he was talking crazy on his contract on national TV. Mm -hmm. Also, you know what I'm saying? He said he stepped to him when he seen him in Puerto Rico and went in. Also, bro, we seen what he did to Stephon Marbury, bro, in New York. I wasn't mm -hmm. cool. Bro, did the media do this stuff to us, man? I'm not cool with that, bro. Because that okay. can happen to any of us, bro. That can happen to any of y'all that's at that level where the media tries to tear you down. He did the same thing to Kyrie Irving, bro. No, no, I don't that's like that, bro. That's what I said. So when a player says his stuff, you just got to let them do what they do. Now, when it comes to the Euros, it's this. Remember, I'm a player. I'm not media. I do not say things just to say it. Right? I don't need, right, uh, who's better, Euros or this type of conversation i can talk basketball the guys that been listening you've been listening to for all these years they weren't basketball players they have no sources they are they sources sources say people are upset with it's them they're they're creating the sources so when when everyone was talking about this 
They said, all right, there's no defense in the NBA. The defense is gone. The defense is stuck. Nobody watches the All-Star game. These are the worst All-Star numbers ever, right? It's mm -hmm. a lie. It's made up. How are you going to say these are the worst because you see 5.5, right? 5.5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Was phones, was smartphones invented in 2001 in the 90s? No, no. right? Yes, with YouTube and the internet and all these extra platforms and all these extra streaming devices added into it to take away from we're watching it on TV. Was the Euro television open? No. So when you say 5.5 last year, that's the lowest. When you look at overall views and clicks for last year's All-Star, it's 1.3 billion views. The media don't know that shit. They're just looking at the old, the old way of thinking. It's new times. They don't know what they're looking for or know what they're looking but at. But don't you like that game that you played in better than now? No, I like the I I, I like evolution. No, no, so, no, no. Hold on, hold on. But Gil, when you played, you actually had to work for something, brother. When you played, when you were in the league, guys were still competing, bro. When you were in the league, that's the one thing I loved about you, your team, and everything y'all played against back then, bro. When you played on a night-to-night -night basis, bro, it was wars out there. It was battles out there still in the league, bro. It was dudes still going at each other's helmets, bro. I remember every time you played Kobe Bryant, you wanted to go for it, bro. Yeah, I remember that. I was a real that, Los Angeles Lakers fan. That's not real. That is never. So you're, 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 you're really believing that when Shea goes up against a player, he's not trying to bust his ass. But it ain't the same, Gil. Where do we get this from? You think I'm because I watch you. I, wa I watch y'all. The, compet the competitive nature was different, bro. The way the way that you the way that you guys wanted to go at each other on a night to night basis is completely different than what I'm seeing now, bro. I'm seeing dudes want to be cool, dudes want to be friends, dudes want to link up. When I watch you play and I watch other guys play, it was everybody in the league going at each other. All of you guys, bro. You, we had a, a better appreciation for those guards. Why? Because on a night to night basis, we knew we was going to see elite level basketball going at each other and guys still defending at a high level. Now it's like, bro, it's a freeway to the basket. It's all jacking up three point shots. Like now you, I think, you know what? You might do like this area better because you did, you were a part of the evolution of the guard guys like you, Steve franchise, Stefan Marbury, you guys kind of ushered in a whole different new type of point guard. You guys went from the, I guess the Mark Jackson type of point guards, the John Stockton type of point guards, the Irving Magic Johnson to you kind of revolutionized the scoring point guard. Nobody ever gave you credit for that. Like y'all, y'all, you franchise guys like Stefan Marbury, all you guys back then, y'all evolutionized that aspect of the game. So I, 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 okay, you probably do like this game better, but I just think that your error was just a way better era of competition. I think everybody wanted it more. I think everybody was hungrier. I just think that and, and, and LeBron was in that era. LeBron these was are playing at that time. Okay, these are narratives, man. This is not real. This is not that's a narrative. That is just opinion based. So you didn't take it personal fact. when you was going oh, against hold, Kobe. Hold on, ticket. If I take the point guards in this era, Lucas averaging 34. Someone has to guard him. Are you just telling me that they're just letting the dude put 34 in their head? You're telling me. A dude averaging 31, 30, 28, 27, 20. No one wants to guard this dude. To try okay, to let me give you the let me give you yes. I'm, I'm gonna give you the difference. And put 50 on their head. I'm gonna give no, you the difference right here. You just can't you, stop these dudes. I'm, but I'm gonna give you the difference right here, though, Gil. Here's the difference. And you and you know this. Enforcers. Your era was the last era of the true enforcers. And what do I mean by that? Luca Donis go to the basket. This era, he ain't got to worry about nothing at that basket. He go back in your era. He got to worry about Big Ben Wallace. He got to worry about Zoe Morning. He got to worry about Tim Duncan. He got to worry about all those other guys. So if he, what? if Gil, if he gets past you, guess what? He going to take a beat and go into the basket. We don't see that no more because they've outlawed that from the game. They've taken that physicality that you still played with in your era. You still played with in your era. They took that aspect of the game away. Your Wizards teams, you guys were a grinding out team. Yeah, you got buckets, but you, Tuan Jameson, all the rest of those dudes, you guys were a real grinded out team. You guys grinded out wins. You guys grind out. I remember all those seasons, bro. I don't see that no more. Okay. I don't see that no more. Because you just said it, right? There's no enforcer, right? 
Right. You know why there's no enforcer? The enforcer was the po power forward who was just this brute strong dude who couldn't do fucking shit else, right? Besides hit someone. That turned into uh, Anthony Davis. That turned into a Dirk Nowinski. That turned into a Giannis. That turned into a four man who can put the ball in the basket now. I disagree with you though, because again, you can't disagree you still, with I'm gonna tell you why. Hold on, I'm gonna tell you why. You said those guys can do number five. That's not true. Some of those guys led the league in rebounds, led the league in block shots. Like a guy like Ben Wallace, led the league in rebounds, led the league in block shots. Like Zoe Morning, like Tim Duncan. All these dudes were all world, all time defenders. Okay, listen, to what you're saying. Your listen to what you're saying. Right. Think about right. what you're actually saying. I, I hear the names you're saying, but let's put it into fact. Right. My Ben Wallace, a undersized four man now plays like Greek the freak. That same four man plays like Anthony Davis, Carl Anthony Thompson. That's the four man now. It's not a Ben Wallace anymore. But don't you think? But well, hold on. But don't you, even with that being said, don't you think they still have more skilled bigs in your era? What I'm saying is, what happens when? No, no. Ben, I'm asking you. I'm saying, don't you think they still have more skilled bigs in your era? When Ben Wallace is sitting at the three point line on defense, right? Right. He's sitting at the three point line on defense. Now he's out of his limit. Now he can't protect the basket. So now he's sitting at the three with Car Anthony. Now you have Antwerp driving to the lane. There's no Ben Wallace there anymore. If Ben Wallace even thought about going there to play defense, Anthony got the ball. Now, so now on defense, Ben Wallace is a liability because he's not used in his element. Now on offense, whoever the star player is, Ben Wallace, this guy is get, gets to do what now? Because he can't, he can't expand the four. They get to sit in the lane on him. Okay, so, so let's talk. Let, let's but, but beside those, beside those guys, you had skilled bigs though. Beside all those enforcers, you had skilled bigs who get buckets. Okay, let me give you an example. Beside all the enforcers, you normally had a skilled big man. You remember this, bro? So let's go on. Like you can go from the Oakley to the Pat Ewing days. You can go from the days where Kevin Garnett you had. Said, uh, you, said, uh, you said Oakley? No, no. I'm saying I said you can go all the way back to those days where it was Oak and Pat Ewing. It was uh uh. Uh, Kevin Garnett and what's the other big fella's name that, that he got drafted with? I forgot. The big dude that did nothing but block shots and rebounds. Hey, uh, uh, Irving? Nah, it was another big dude. I forget his name, man. I'm going to think about it in a second. But he blocked shots and got rebounds. He yeah, right around. Got, that was his skill. Block shots right. and so, got uh, rebounds. Right. So, so the, again, then you had Tim Duncan. They always had like a serviceable four man around him that did all the dirty work, whether it was Malik Rose, somebody like that, who were, who were, who were you know what I'm saying, role players who did their roles. Role you, players. But they still had. They still had great bigs beside them. Rasheed Wallace was with Ben Wallace. So Rasheed was taking dudes out on the perimeter, hitting threes. Mm -hmm. So and to me, in y'all's era, bro, y'all had the best of both worlds is what I'm saying. In this era, they don't have that no more. In this era, I feel like, yeah, you might be right, Gil. They got more offensively skilled fours. But guess what? They don't have them fives to go with it no more. In your era, they had the, both the four. And they, it was more of a well-rounded position league. Now it's more small ball with fours playing fives like AD that should be playing fours with no enforcers. So what I'm saying, what all I'm saying to you is this, bro. I just feel like the product of what the, which you came in the game with was better than what we're seeing now. And the reason why I say that, Gil, is because guys took the game and, my, and from what the fans see, guys took the game more serious. The games were more competitive and you guys were out there really giving people the money's worth. It wasn't all this low management stuff going on. It wasn't dudes out here ducking smoke. Anytime you had a superstar guard, bro, you can't lie and tell me you wasn't looking for that game against Kobe. I remember you couldn't wait to go to the go to the guy dag on Staples Center to drop 60. Went and took the bow. Every time you played Kobe, you guys were trying to go at each other's necks. You was out there trying to get buckets. So I see, I don't see that no more. I don't see that competitive uh, spirit no more to where if a guy drives to the basket, I'm fouling him hard. The Kenya Martins don't exist in the league no more, bro. Because they don't need, they don't exist in the league because they, they skilled that position. Okay, from the 80s, right, 80s and 90s, right. the power forward was more of the real brute guy. Okay. Then that, that brute... Came it, it became Tim Duncan, right? Um, Kevin, Kevin Garnett, Garnett, 
right. Ray LaFriends. It became guys, the Dirt New Whiskey, it became that guy, right? <laughs> So right. that guy had an advantage over the just a natural boot who didn't put no offense into the game. And then eventually the position just got better skill-wise. How? Not defensively. Gil, how you, Gil, not how defensively. You so Gil, you think, Gil, you think Anthony Davis is – hold on. I'm, I'm going to make sure I get this clear. You think AD is more skilled than the king? No. You're talking about now. You're talking about a two-way player. Do no, I no, think? I'm saying, no, I'm, but I'm asking you. No, but you said the position no. got way more skill. So I'm, I'm going to ask you. So do you think that – let, let's name the biggest you just named in the era right now in, the, in today's game. You name AD. You name mm -hmm. also Cat. You uh -huh. name uh, who was Jokic, Jokic right? Embiid. So you think? So let, let's let's go to this. You think Jokic was better than Tim Duncan? Jokic is better than Tim Duncan. At what exactly? All around At basketball. Mm. Would you take? Would you? Would, do you think? And see now you thinking. See what I'm saying? Because now and when you looked at Tim. They had they had a enforcer beside him. You keep talking about an enforcer is nothing anymore. But they hold on, but Gil, but Gil, but Gil, here's what I'm saying to you, Gil. And you know what, Gil, you know I'm not lying about this. But so, what I'm saying is so we taking <laughs> we taking Jokic, Gil, in this era, and they're saying Jokic is a man in this era, right? He's he's about to, he may be a three time MVP, right? Mm -hmm. Now think about this, Gil. In your era, he couldn't sniff three MVPs. He couldn't sniff three MVPs if he played in your era. You know why? That's not the that's not the that's not how you gauge But that something. is the point. That is not how you gauge something. No, I'm saying, hold on. No, no. What I'm saying to you is this though, Gil. I'm saying I could put you in the way you play, in the way you play when you were in the game, in this game, and your game goes crazy in this era. In this era, you are a lot Hall of Famer. Top 75 all-time player. No, don't say no. Because you average 29 points a game, 28 points a game, 27 points for a three-year stretch before you got into trouble. When well, you was on the way to go into the Hall of Fame in that era. So in this era, you would have been a Hall of Fame. There ain't no way you would have averaged 30 for multiple seasons in this era. But you take guys from this era. If I took Jokic and I put Jokic and made him out to compete with guys like Shaq, made him out to compete with Zoe Morning. Made him out to compete with Tim Duncan. Made him out to compete the with Kevin was Garnett. What's Zoe going to do on offense? He went, I'm, I'm, listen, what I'm telling you, though. I'm saying to you, going through all those guys, there's no way he's still the same guy you see right now. Oh, so that's the question. You think Jokic is the same guy now? That you Do you think he would be the same guy in that era that you see now? Yes. Come on. Chill. Come on, man. Come on, wait, wait, man. Hold on, hold on. You're telling me Jokic wouldn't average 20? Man, Jokic wouldn't even be on the road. By the time guys like Shaq, by the time guys like uh 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 Zoe Morning, by the time Who guys like do? average 20 and 10 with three so blocks. Why couldn't Jokic average 20 and 10? No, I'm saying because that error was more physical, bro. They were, what that the was more physical, physical mean skill. No, no, it's skill. Skill. Gil, skill. I'm, I'm with you. Okay, so Gil, what about Gil all the other big? What can't about all the other big Europeans? What, what about all the other big Europeans that were skilled back then? The big man that didn't pop up. Okay, let's give you an example. Ray LaFrance. What would he have been in this era? In this era, Ray LaFrance would have been guy dag on. Uh, and you know I ain't lying. He'd have been easy 20, 23, and 10. 20, you can't give 10. people points, dog. That's not how you do stuff. You can't give people. So you don't think that? What? You don't think Ray LaFrance would dominate this era with his skills? Who knows? Come on, Gil. You know that, bro. If you didn't dominate your era, how the fuck are you going to dominate the next era? Because this era, this era is more, the game is more, just like a lot of guys say. Just like Shaq and all those guys say. Man, I wish I played in this era. If I played in this era, man, I average four. Of course Shaq can say it because he dominated our era with all bigs. Now there's no bigs. Of course he can dominate this era because he has no one to guard him. Right, is, so that's what I'm saying in this. That's hold on. That's what I'm saying. Who the fuck era. is he gonna guard in this era, bro? He Shaq. Listen, Shaq's not gonna have to worry about Gil. Shaq's not gonna worry about that because most of those guys are gonna be in foul trouble. Who okay. is he guard gonna Gil. guard in this era? So who's the who's wills the game's gonna lean too much, uh, Gil? That's, Shaq not, what gonna, that's not what we're gonna say. Who is he gonna guard besides Rudy Goldberg? Who can? Who is gonna just sit down there for him to manhandle? Okay. They, well, he, they're gonna have to guard him too, to right? Be able to play on the other side too, right? Not if all the guys are fouled out. 
He has to be able to play on the other side too. So that means when he's guarding Jokic, right? He has to be able to play pick and roll. Couldn't do that. He has to be able to play pick and pop. He couldn't do that, right? He couldn't do none of the stuff that they th- th- these guys are doing today. If we're gonna sit there and say we're gonna play Shaq rules, of uh, fucking course. I think I, 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 I think this sh- to play I think these Shaq rules. Go ahead. I think Shaq would impose his will on this game. I think Shaq would have took the game, slowed the game down, and imposed his will on this that's, game. That's a, that's and, a, and, and, that's a that, no, no, I'm saying, but I'm saying this is what I'm saying about him and a lot of those other bigs that played in that era. I think those bigs were skilled. Pat Ewing, these guys could shoot the ball. These guys could put the ball on the floor a little bit. These guys were skilled. You, you saying Pat Ewing wasn't skilled? He, he fucking right shoulder. He, he, he can only go one way. Bro, Pat Ewing was out here putting up 23, 24 points a game, 12 That's rebounds. Cool. Jump shot was impeccable. Fade away, all that. Jump Close shot, move. jump shot, f- jump shot over his right shoulder. If he's on the other side, he's going baseline with the same thing. If he's going there, he's going to fake baseline, go middle with the little fake. I know his game. I, what I do is no basketball. <laughs> I know fucking basketball. That's what I do know. <laughs> So, <laughs> I do know that. I mean, it's, it's, so, it, 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 but here's my point, bro. My point is this, right? The, what I said about errors and why I thought you, um, why I said a lot of people are disappre- don't appreciate this, don't like this error no more, is because we don't see the same competitive spirit that we saw in the same type of competition that we saw when you played and before you. Got you and the error before you, the Jordan error before you. We don't see that no more. Now we see a bunch of guys being friends, a bunch of guys being cool, guys getting free ways to the basket. Anything that's, that's a, a touch foul guild is being called a flagrant foul now when those were common fouls when you played. It's go still back a foul. And watch the, it, go back and matter? watch the Go back and watch the highlights when you played. I've seen plays that you got the hell beat out of you. They was common fouls. Now those are the game getting stopped, doing a 20-minute review. Those are flagrant fouls. Mm-hmm. The game To me, the game is completely different. So to me, I'm saying this. I, I semi- agreed to what you said to an extent about how the game has been changed because they asked for yes and they took out i don't think you i think you want to say that the game got better because they took out the the enforcers i think the game got worse when they took out the enforcers because the, because the enforcers it wasn't just what you said it was just non-skilled guys that was just out there fouling the hell out of dudes that's actually not true but now this is this is this is what I'm this is now we wrap it back to the actual question that you asked me. My comments about Euro, right? Right. The Euros who are actually dominating in this game. Right. Right. It's only bigs. Mm-hmm. The year and Luca, old, and, Luca the, and Luca, that's it. If you take, but Luca's all of six, nine and a half. You take okay, Luca okay. out, name me who's the best second Euro guard. Um, take Luca out the next second Euro go. Oh, I, Shay, no, but he's yeah. not from Euro, he's from Canada, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we're just sticking with Euro itself, I would have to say, uh, you would probably say, Oh boy, from exactly now. You take it now, you <laughs> now tell me who the shooting guards are. Who's the top shooting guards? Hold on, I'm trying to think. Well, because I'm trying to take. I'm not talking about international. We just talking about Euro. We talking about Euro. We ain't talking because because a lot of the players are international. They're just not Euro. So uh, yeah, a lot you, of the, the, the best second Euro guard would probably be Dennis Schroeder. Yeah, Dennis Schroeder from. Uh, and then that. Well, hold so, on, hold on. Let me think. Let me think. So, what do you think three, four, and five look like? If then the same thing with the shooting guard. Then the same thing with the small forward. The Euro one, two, and three aren't that good. They're not actually doing anything in this league the the euros that has a place in this league the euros that replace the brute guys are the 610 power fours that can shoot the three the seven foot power forwards and centers that can shoot the three so when i said if you want defense back like you want like the the game you're saying then you get rid of the guys who expanded the, the game get rid of the euros right that was the troll of it i the game has been expanded out of the brute game because the the big men from Euro shoot the three. They don't bang down low. They're going to sit out there and keep the lane spread, right? They're going to keep the lane spread for all the talented guards that want to get in there. So if you if you want it back to brute basketball, what do you have to do then? Get no, rid of the guys. You don't have to, no, but you, to me, to me, that's why I disagree with you. You don't have to get rid of them. I think they tried to make it seem like 
This is what they try to make it seem like. They try to make it seem like you had to get rid of them in order to open up the game, to make the game fan, fan friendlier. I don't believe that. I believe that if you would have kept those guys in, these guys wouldn't have been doing all the stuff they're doing. What? Do, you, do you think, okay, let, let me give you an example. Do you think if Jokic had to compete with guys like Big Ben Wallace, guys like uh, 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 Zoe Morning, I'm talking about defensively, guys like Tim Duncan, all those guys, Kevin Garnett, all these dudes are defensive player of the years, Dikembe De Mutombo, all these dudes in your era on a night-to-night -night basis, you think mm -hmm. he won three MVPs? It isn't about would he be dominant. No, I'm we saying no, no, I'm, no, no. I'm trying to give you an example. Do you think that he me, would listen? Be but what I'm saying is you're, you're not. You you can't take away his rebounding and his assists. Now, right? I'm, I'm saying yeah, against him, right? Good. That's, so oh, that's my you point. You him, what makes Jokic good is his assists. If you take away his assists, he's just fucking twenty and ten guy. No, I'm saying no, I'm saying no, that's my hold on. That's my is question. Is he going to average still, twenty and ten in our area? Yes. I disagree with that, bro. I don't think with them type of dudes playing the defense that they play, because again, who is he competing against now at the big man spot? He got three but, centers in the league, right? It's three centers in the league. Who is okay, he competing? What, what, him, what, what, him, what, what, Joel Embiid. What him, I'm Joel saying Embiid. is, you have to be able to put the guy on defense. Also, you don't want to do that. You just but those guys. Hold on, but those guys. I you named just, you. Like so, those, when you say Alonzo Mourning, he was twenty and ten too. Those guys. Where does he have to guard Jokic? Well, he has guard him on the perimeter and in the post. Okay, so if he's guarding him on the perimeter, how long do you keep Alonzo Mourning in the game? But that's the thing. You got to ask that to reverse. A liability. I agree with you. Hold on, Gil. I agree with what you just said. But you you ain't you ain't asking the question in reverse. You ain't asking. Well, is Jokic going to get in foul trouble most of the time from having to guard those guys? Is, it, is Jokic going to get in foul it, trouble for having to guard Kevin Garnett? Do you think Jokic could have guard Kevin Garnett? Do you yes. think Jokic could guard Rasheed Wallace? Do yes. you think Jokic, you think Jokic can guard KG and Rasheed? Jump shooting guys that didn't really bang. Like Kevin Garnett weighed all of 212 pounds. Come on, man. What are you, you talking really about? Think Why you guard KG about this? How about this? Prime, man? Do you know the reason that... Like players like Bosch came in the game and fucking got on fire quick because there was nobody that was fast enough than him. You know what's so funny? Kwame Brown, we were playing, we were playing Miami, right? And he said something. We all looked at each other and we thought that the nigga was crazy. We said, All right, we got a double shack. Kwame Brown said, No, I can guard him one on one. And we sitting there like, oh shit. He said, what are you going to do? Try to back me down. I'm strong enough to hold him. So mm -hmm. coach said, all right, Kwame, you can guard him one-on-one. -on -one. Sure enough, we didn't have to double, right? We didn't have to double. He was holding that motherfucker like, like nothing. Right. Two nights, two nights later, three nights later, we're playing Toronto. Chris Bosh, right? Kwame said, uh, we was like, all right, Kwame, you're going to guard Chris Bosh. Boom, boom, boom. And he said this. Now nah, we're going to have to double Bosch. We laughed. Kwame knew something we didn't know. Fast twitch muscles, quick. He played. He didn't use brute strength. Right? He used skill work, mm -hmm. which made Kwame move side to side more. So he did need a double helping being a help guy on that. But wouldn't, wouldn't, that, wouldn't that apply with those other guys too? That you just Ooh. named, wouldn't that apply with Jokic having to guard KG? KG was slimmer, faster, quicker, could have got him. But, but you gotta you gotta give KG his game. Turn no, no, face, no, no, no. I'm saying, no, you I'm, saying, no, no. I'm, I'm saying I'm saying, face, Jokic had to, who, I'm saying who, who, Jokic had to guard KG in his prime. You think well, Jokic what was KG chance? doing in his prime? What was his go-to move, sir? KG could take you in his prime. KG could take you off the KG was a power forward. He didn't even want to be a center. Right, no, I'm saying, but I'm saying, but what, what I'm saying to you is that those are the guys he would have probably had to have been locked up with at certain points in times. So I'm, I'm what I'm saying to you is, you think that he legitimately would have had a chance? Because remember, and I'm saying to you this, Gil, in this era, most of the nights, Jokic, you not have to worry about another big man that's out here averaging twenty and ten. That's a threat. Right. Okay, so but he, so he get to do his thing, and you don't, and he don't have to worry about having to stop you, right? Now let's take that into the into the era you played in, where now he's got to play Tim Duncan, he's got to play Zoe Morning, mm -hmm. he can make Matumbo to an extent. I'm talking about guys who play defense. I'm saying he got to go up against these guys, and then guys who can score against him. You can put the throw the Pat Ewings in the world. You can throw in the uh, the Kevin Garnett, like I said. You can also throw in um, 
Hakeem in the late 90s. You can mm-hmm. throw in all of these guys. Do well, you know what made – okay, now, you like the Rockets, right? Yeah. Do you know what really made Hakeem hard to fucking guard? The three-point shooters, you're going to say. The three-point shooters he had around him. That's I know what you're going to say. So his, but, power okay, so forward, this, his power <laughs> forward was big shot Rob, right? Right. So you couldn't even think about trying to double. So that means his individual skill work was going to eat you alive. Now, let's take – Let's take, give me Jokic, right? Right. And I'm the point guard with Jokic. Who do you have guarding Jokic? You're the point guard with Jokic. Yeah. You oh, want, okay. You now want, let's, say, let's, say, let's say, let's say, okay, okay. Now let's say where you playing against, let's say you the Spurs, right? And you playing uh-huh. against, you playing against Tim and So Tim is obviously going to be on Jokic and Jokic. Tony's going to be on you. Uh-huh. Okay. So. Who's the best defensive player on the team? Tim, right? Yeah. Okay, if he's sitting at the three, who is stopping me from getting in the lane now? No, I ain't saying Gil. I'm no, not no, saying no, nobody no, no, stopping no. you. Wait, hold, you got to listen. Who is stopping me from getting in the lane? No, I, nobody, bro. Ain't nobody okay. in, the, in the world who's going to stop me from getting in the right. lane. So, so what ends up happening is this. Because of Jokic can shoot the three, it right. forces the big man to guard him there, which means the Shays, all of those guys are going to attack the rim. How many points are going to give me before they take Tim Duncan out of the game and try to reroute their defense? Well, they're not going to. They're you're not going to. You're, the, not- you're talking about the bigs and not realizing what the guards are doing. He's not going to do that because if you're playing against a great coach like Popovich, what Popovich is going to do is what you call have rotational defense. So when you drive, the weak side is going to rotate every single time with the Spurs. That's why they were an elite defensive team. So when the, just the why players, are they elite? Where's that elite defense now? No, I'm with. Hold on, chill. I'm with you. I'm talking about when you played in the personnel he had. I uh, listen, I'm with you now. I've been calling out Popovich now on the shit that's going on over there. I'm talking about in that era, mm-hmm. they had an elite team defense. So it wasn't just yes. dependent on Tim Duncan. So even if you would have put Tim Duncan in a pick and roll, even if you would have came off the pick and roll and got to the rack, guess what? There would have been help defense. Now, guess what you would have had to do? They would have made you make a decision. Are you going to force? Simple, are you going to force this shot? Or are you going to kick it out? What I'm saying is, who who is there to stop me? Who's going to make me pass? Ginobili, Bruce Bowen. What the fuck? Okay, hold on. Oh, so let's get on that. So let's get on that. So now let's do this, right? So that's who he probably puts on you. It's Bruce Bowen, and guess what Bruce is doing? Fighting over the screen. So now Bruce is fighting over the screen, right? Now Bruce is, I would say, a little bit taller than you, longer than you. Now you would have had to really go in your bag. Which you could do. Not saying you couldn't do. You had to really go in your bag now to deal with Bruce Bowen. But you're not also thinking about the other guys, health side, that Popovich and those guys had rotating. So if you did beat Bruce Bowen, you had a Ginobili waiting in the paint. Take a charge. You had somebody else. So now you would have had to to go to your assist bag. Think about what you're saying. When I get past Tim Duncan... Because Tim Duncan is at the three-point line now, not in the lane. Now when I drive in the lane, the back line to stop me from scoring is a Ginobili who don't play defense, a, a, a Tony Parker who's too small. Who is stopping me at the no, they, had, they actually had other threes on the team, though. Who's that blocking they had, my shot? No one. No, I'm saying, oh, no, 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 I'm saying by the, time you, by the time you came off the pick, Bruce Bowen is fighting over that screen. He ain't just letting you come off that screen clean. Bruce is fighting over all the It don't matter what, you're, what I'm saying. It don't matter what you're doing. Your best defensive player that's right. sitting in the lane playing defense is now sitting at the... Do you know why Utah traded Rudy Goldberg? Do you not remember the playoff games? The defense player of the year. He won defensive player of the year and couldn't be on the floor in the playoffs. Because his defense didn't ma- – because he can't score and they're playing small ball, so we can't use Rudy on the offensive game, on the offensive end, to take away the small ball. And then on defense, he has to sit at the three-point line, which means why are we playing him? So here, here, here's my bottom line. You respect it. You think that you respect the defense in this era? Do I respect it? I'm saying, do you think the defense is, is near the level of the uh, – in the? You played in that era, in the era you played in. 
Yes. You yes. you're watching this era. I'm watching this era. You do you think that the defense in this era is the same as the defense that you played against? No, because the players are not the same. Right. Hold on. So don't, hold on. That's the my, players hold on. are not the same. But chill. That's my point to you, homie. My point is, is this. So you're. I'm saying to you. In this era, we're seeing the defense is more lax because the personnel is different now, right? So now the game is more more put on to, into an offensive context. This is mm -hmm. what we're saying, right? More, more specification on offense and scoring. Less specification on defense. The era you played, Cass was still d and up. So <laughs> all, all, what I'm saying to you is this. So I'm saying guys in this era are getting accolades for playing in an era that's weaker defensively but stronger as far as focusing offensively but in your era you have to do that with every era you can't, no, you can't no, but in your era, era both levels and your era both levels were high is what i'm saying Wait, no no if you listen to the 70s if you listen to the 70 players they, a, they ran they were they, you right the 80s were soft to them the 80s were soft because the rules changed once TV came in. You never heard the 2000s but say the 90s We was don't soft. know that. Because you never heard the 2000s? You never heard Joe era the early 2000s what, what, say the 90s what, what, was soft? Listen to what I'm saying. If the 70s, in our mind, we watched the NBA for the first time in the 80s, right? So that is our first look at what NBA was. So that is our first impression, right? right. How it looked. If you ask the 70s, they said NBA was watered down in the 80s because right. of how they were playing basketball. Right. Then the 90s, you listen to Isaiah Thomas. They changed the rule for, for Michael Jordan and did all this. They say the 90s was watered. Right. Then the 2000s. The they never said the 90s was watered. They never said the 90s was watered in your era. Who? In the 2000s, you never the heard that until the now. 2000s, and I'm talking about from 2000 to 2010, Gil. You never heard those. You never heard to heard those errors disrespecting Jordan, those players from those errors. The 2000s were a little tougher because they brought in the zone to stop Shaq, and you had elite, and you had, and you had they, elite perimeter defenders, guys they, like Kobe, guys like all those guys who were elite. Stop! Defenders. Stop! That you didn't. Stop listening to fucking what's the name? I'm, not, I'm watching. No, I'm telling you what I watch. So you didn't? You hold on. You gonna tell me that in the 2000s, from 2000 to 2010, all those guys you had on the perimeter that you had to deal with? Forget the superstars. We talking about guys that ain't superstars, Gil. We talking about guys like Bruce Bowen. These guys that were making all defensive teams that weren't superstars. You're gonna tell me that those guys weren't harder to deal with than the guys that they're, that they're playing against now, where they can just have a free lane, come down the court. Pull up threes from anywhere. Gil, you know this one thing, right? So, Steph, we all know he's a special player, generational, all-world special player, right? He coming across half-court, Gil, shooting from anywhere. Gil. Stop him. In, your, in the era before your Stop era. Stop him. No, no, but listen what I'm saying, right? Oh, but listen what I'm saying to you. That's my, hold on. That's my point to you, Gil. What I'm saying to you is this. It ain't too many more people that's picking these dudes up full court like GP used to. Okay, let me give you an example. The one, yes, I'm gonna give you the hold on. I'm gonna give you the last of a dying breed. The last of a dying breed in this era is a guy like Drew Holiday who would pick dudes up full court. That's why it was stupid, in my opinion, for the Bucks to trade for him. That was stupid. Uh, you, 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 you're, you're, what the problem is, you're arguing with a dude who was in that era. And I watched you. Hold on. And I watched you. You're work arguing work. with me, and I'm in the era that you are glorifying. And I watched you work for I was in the I'm, league when they tried to press me. When you had Damon Stoudemire trying to do a fucking college 2-2-1 two, two, and pick up what, what full court one-on-one. -on -one. But right. unfortunately, players like me who just got in the league with all this speed and a scoring mentality. Then right. you had um, uh, Tony Parker with all his speed. And the problem with the press in the 2000s is if you're pressing Mark Jackson, right? After he break the press, what is he going to do? <laughs> He's going to he set up the offense, He's going to set up the offense. He's going to find somebody. Now, when you press someone like Steph and he breaks the press, what is he doing? Buckets. So what ends up happening is you was putting a but fire right? under guys who were willing to be but stop, up. Hold on, But stop right there. But chill. Stop right there. This is why I'm challenging you right here on what you just said. This is why I said you're wrong.
You don't deal. How many players you seeing picking Steph Curry up full court in this era? Do in, uh, in the, hold on, in your era, in the era before, let, let me say this to you. This is what I watched. In your era and in the era before you, guys took that shit personal. So you was the bucket machine, Gil. You was one of the premier bucket machines at the guard spot in the league. So, yeah, they were going to pick you up and press you full court. They were going to take you serious because no, you were no, a scoring no, threat. But, but you're, okay, you're, you're saying it wrong. You're, it's wrong. The, so, but then, why don't is, we see that no more, Gil? Why don't we see dudes? Pressing Steph Curry like that no because more. Because when court. you pick when you pick someone up full court who wants a you think about what I'm saying. What is a full court press? You're making me what? And you're, you're, turning, time, you're turning the game into a fast break. So what I see now is a full court fast break. Mm -hmm. So now what ends up happening is once I break it. I'm not stopping to set up offense now. I'm using this as a fast fucking break. Right, right. right. So what ends up happening is these guys say, wait, fuck, hold on. These guys are trying to score. Let's fucking fall back and make them walk the ball up the court. Because if we pick them up, they're coming full speed. But that's not a, hold on, but it, that's my question to you. That's not a problem to you because let me give you this, this example, right? What happens if you try to pick up De'Aaron Fox? He's gonna race you, but here's the thing. He, he's gonna. But here's, here's the thing. Now, though, what dude. happens to your defense once he gets past your baseline? No, no. But he, this is what I'm saying to you, though. That's why I said I have more appreciation for the era you came in and the era right before yours, because guys like Gary Payton, guys like Lindsey Hunter, all these dudes was picking you up. They strapping up and they was quick with their feet. They were moving their feet. They were able to move their hands. They were able to use their forearms to guide you. You wasn't able to that just come down. That is easy and... when you're not trying to score. It is easy when you're trying not to score. When So you think so you think a prime Gary Payton, prime defensively, tip top Gary Payton. You think he would still have prime, you think hold on. Let me let me get this straight. So all, what I'm saying to you is this. Yeah, keep going. You, you have a prime, a prime, Gary, Payton, a prime, Gary, a prime Payton, Gary Payton that can move the way he moved and was able to be physical the way he was able to be physical. You're going to tell me that he could affect a majority of the guards, even the guards who were scoring guards that was back in that era. He could, he could, but he would, he wouldn't have the same type of effect on on a guy like Steph Curry. If he was able to pick him up full court, which is what you know Gary would have did. Gary would have picked Steph Curry up for even though he knew uh, Curry was trying to score. He would have picked Curry up full court, full court, and he would have made Curry either get rid of the ball or take a bad shot. When, when he tried to pick up Jason Williams full court, who wasn't a scorer like that, but he had all the tricks in the trade, how did that work out for him? He wasn't in his prime. Yeah, it was. What are you talking about? Yeah, he was. Well, he hold was on, you talking, about, you, talking about, you talking about white chocolate, right? Yeah. He, that was not, that, hold on. That, that, was, that was Gary prime. Payton, hold on. That was Gary Payton from Seattle? Yep. What year was that? 95, 96, 96, 97. Look, what, what, let me see what he did against um, AI. That's not true, bro. That's not true. Dude's had hell against a prime Gary Payton. All the no, guards, Gary Payton. Gary, matter of fact, wait, Gary hold Payton. Hold on, hold on. This is what I'm trying to tell you, man. Let's go. When you're talking about defense, and the guys who play defense at their position, right. you have to look at what the offense was doing. What type of players were in that era offensively for them to look good or look bad defensively? Right. In my era, think about my era. Right. I'm in 2001-2. Right? I'm in the... The second best scorer in my position was Mike James. Mike Bibby. Hold on, what year was that? What year are you talking about? Um, Stephon Mulberry. Yeah, yeah right? I'm about to say, I know Steph was in there. I know Steve yeah. Francis was in there. Right? The, the, the Steve Francis, who averaged, what, 16 points? No, He's no, 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 no. Steve Francis, hold on. Steve Francis had years where he was averaging over 20-something a game. And, and, and Steve Francis, franchise. And Houston, he's averaging 20-something, and got that going. He was a franchise. He averaged 21, 21, 16, right? Right. So for a few years in Houston, he averaged 20 points a game. So it was him, now, Stephon Marbury. So, so where was the – so that – these – and these guys are still controlled guards. The Baron Davis, Baron they were Davis. still point guards, right? What was Baron they Davis still, putting up, Gil? Was Gary, huh? wasn't, wasn't B. Diddy putting up around 20 a game too? Yeah, P. D. put uh, – Baron Davis put up 24. 
one year, made the All-Star game. No, no, I'm saying, but, for, like, didn't he have a stretch where he's putting up, like, around 19, 20 a game? Mm. For about four or five years? Like, I think it was, like, three or four, four or five years. He had a stretch where he's putting up around 20. It was a couple scoring he guards. Had, he had one year, 22, and then he had a 20 and 21 later in his, his career. Right, so I'm saying it was a couple of guards. Now, they wasn't on a level, like, how you was doing it. You, you know what I'm saying? Because you was out there, damn near, putting up 30. But all I'm saying to you, bro, it was threats. And guys was taking that serious. They was d these guys up and picking guys up. Three-fourths no, of a court. But, full court. But, but all I'm saying to you now you're, is you're, this. You're, you're picking up guys who who ran offense. So they you ran tell me, you think, you think, hold on, you think Stephon Marbury came down and ran offense? Yes. <laughs> Come on, chill. Come on, chill. Come on, he had the same mind as you. No, he did not have the same mind as me. Steph was out there getting buckets. Steph was out there getting mad because Kevin Garnett kept asking for the ball. That's why he wanted to be traded. Yeah, yeah, Come no, I'm, I'm right. And then Come what on. happened? Hold on, hold on. So then what happened? He still was a bucket getter, even when he played with Amari. A, 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 a bucket getter playing with Amari. The, the, what, what, what was it? What was he averaging? Like twenty some a game. So back then, now, think about what you're saying now. Back then, he's averaging. 20, 22, 24. In right. the era, era that played great defense. Okay, and that's hold on. That's my point to you. Hold on. An hold era on. that played great uh, era that played great defense. Right. Guys who did not shoot the three very Steph, well. Steph, excuse me, Steph Marbury shot the three. Steph Marbury didn't shoot the three. He, he wasn't pulling up threes. He was those, pulling up threes, that, but those days, let's, let's go hold on, Gil. Let's go to those days he played with New Jersey with the Nets. Let's go to those days he played with the Nets, the days he played with the Suns, and those and those days. Twenty eight percent, thirty two percent, thirty eight, twenty eight percent, thirty percent, thirty one percent, twenty percent, thirty two percent. I mean, we, they didn't. No, shoot I'm saying, the, but he was he was still shooting the three. He was a guard. I was, listen, we my team. You consider me a three point shooter, right? Yeah, right. My team shot fourteen threes a game. I shot seven of those. That's that's true. These guys are shooting 43s a game. That's that's my hold on, chill. So that's my point, bro. That, that's point, why you your like your it. Point. That's why you like that shit, bro. You like that shit because you are no fucking chill. How you like that shit because you're, you're not listen, you're not trying to look at it as a basketball game. If we shot 14, right? How much offense and plays were we running? That means we were running more plays to only shoot 14. If they're not running that many plays, they get more shots up. No, I think they're running more plays to shoot threes. Is what I'm saying. I'm, what I mean that what I mean by that, everything's set up to end and shooting a three. Versus back back then, yeah, you would play in the post, but then there was exceptions to guards like we just named, who were scoring guards. So to me, for a guy like you. Who was a scoring guard? Yeah, you would probably love this era in the way they play in this era. But I'm just saying that they took for me and for a lot of other people, we like the competition of your era and the '90s era where guys actually took pride in competing. I ain't saying that you're gonna lock down Steph Curry. We saw. A I don't different like. Goal. I don't like how you're wording that. Why? Because we. Why because are you, not, you, the you pass, bro? just going out there getting their ass whooped on purpose? That is what. You think the person who has to stand in front of Curry and I have to stand in front of uh, Fox and I got to stand in front of Shea, you're saying I'm not competing? Bro. That is, that I, is horrible to even think about that. So like, these niggas, is, I'm just going to go out there and get put 50 on my head. Here's my point. No, no, no. Here's my, here's my point. I think that's what's going on. I'm going to tell you why. Here's my point. My point is this. You would have had guys like we would have took it more seriously. We saw guys like even a guy like Lindsey Hunter. You know how Lindsey Hunter was. You played against him. Lindsey Hunter's crazy. He's like a goddamn gnat. You try to swat him away, the motherfucker keep flying around. You see what I'm saying? It's like you saw that type, those type of guys in the league, Gil. That they, they're they're not down. useful anymore. You, no, you, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, look, though. even Mike James, even the dudes you name in Mike James, these dudes are gonna put pressure on you defensively all over the court. All I'm saying to you is this, bro. We don't see that no more. We don't see that level of physicality no more. And that's what we're talking about with this new era. So when you say what you said about Jokic and you said that, oh, you think he could translate? My man, it was a lot of bigs, in my opinion, that were Euro bigs that was on the bench that could have played like, okay, let me give you an example, right? Chris Webber would have been way better than Jokic right now in this era. See, Webb could pass the ball. See, Webb could post up. He could do the day. He could do all that. 
right? No, no, no. And Steve no. Webb Web was an all-world player in the NBA. But and look, he, he wasn't even he wasn't even regarded as a lock first ballot Hall of Famer. And and, 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 that, and that dude had crazy numbers his whole career in this game was crazy. Okay, now you're saying something that makes sense. Man, come on, chill. Now you <laughs> now what what does what does Chris Webber look like if you actually add a three to his game? Well, he did shoot the three. No, he I mean, it wasn't that focused. That ain't, that's no, my no. point, but Gil. That's my point, Gil. What if you, you are, added a three, a deadly three, to Chris Webber's game? The 1,300 people that's watching this right now, this is what Gil is doing. Gil is doing this because he was the one who was the evolution for the way they play now. So I'm talking about putting up all the threes. No, listen, the one, listen, you listen, were the original one that was shooting all the threes. Even what I'm saying is think came. about what I'm saying. If Weber could shoot the three, right? How dangerous does he become? Well, he, I mean, they, it depends on how much he wanted to shoot the three. How well, focused was he? If you gave him a three, he had the three then. No, he, he did shoot. not. What was he shooting from the three back then, uh, Gil? Zero percent, 20 percent. Uh, he shot one year 44 percent, but he took two a game. What about That's what I'm saying. What about he the didn't team? make he only made for his career one three a game for one time. Yeah, no, that's what I'm hold on. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm saying he could shoot the three. Because remember, no, the that's not shooting the three. No, that's Gil, not a that's three point danger. Gil, Why are we Gil, doing this? Gil, I'm saying he can, stop it. Gil, he can shoot the three, Playboy. Dude, In that you, era, you he can shoot three threes and you don't make one a game. How is your three oh, point? Okay, shooter? so Gil, okay, so Gil, let me give you let me, let me, okay, let me eat to that right now. I'm gonna eat to that shit right now. So they said Craig Hodges won the best three point shooters in the league. He won the three point average. Contest, right? 0.3 makes a game. How is that a three point shooter? Stop. No, no. I'm, hold on. I'm about, to give you, I'm about to give you an example. So look at look at your boy. Let's go to Craig Hodges then. Let's turn up then. We're going to turn up. Let's turn up. So let's go to Craig Hodges. They call Craig Hodges one of the greatest three point shooters in the game, right? How many threes was he shooting the game? What about Tim Legler? How many years Tim Legler was shooting one or two threes a game? One or two. He's, he's regarded. He's regarded as one, one of the greatest three point shooters in NBA one history. One or two threes, dude. These are these these are irrelevant now. The, you're you're taking oh how Chris Webber made for his career 0.3 threes a game. Right, right. That so are you guarding him at the three point line? In this era, you would have to because they, they would put more. Energy. We're not. No, 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 no. You in, in this era, and you gave him 0.33 threes a game. Oh no, 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 no. I'm not saying no, no. What I'm saying to you, Gil. Hey, and shout out to Gil, everybody in the comment section, man. This is how we get down, dog. It is what it is. Look, if you put him in this era, I'm saying that they would have put more emphasis on him shooting the three. Okay, for example. Oh my god. Oh to my me, god. to me, hold on. I just to asked me, you if you gave him a three. Right. Point range like in today's era, right. what would he be? Then you argued that he was a three point shooter, which he wasn't. He no, I said, no, 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 I said he was in the blue three. moon, but no, no, no. he wasn't I said, a three point shooter. No, 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 real. I never said he was a three point. I said he could shoot the three. That's different from you the being three, a three. That anybody can you can go shoot the three. Don't no, mean no, you're no, gonna no, make no, it. No, 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 he was respect. Hold on, bro. He wasn't he was respected at the three point line. No one gave a fuck for his about career. Chris Weber at the what three point line. Career? What did he do for his career? I fucking 29, 22. Who, who the fuck cares? What the fuck? I'm, what I'm asking you. What did he, for the three? he didn't even make one a game. What do we care? He right. Didn't so hold on. But that's game. my point. Hold on. But this is my point to you, my nigga. He didn't make hold one on. a game. Hold what on. But, this, but hold on. But this is my point to you. We can say Craig Hodges is a three point shooter, right? How many threes Greg Hodges was shooting per game? Craig Hodges shot for the first year, 22%, 12%. Well, I mean, the, the three-point line. Right, so, but how many? No, whoa, no, 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 just because he won a three-point shootout. Wasn't based off that. Now, let's look at Tim Legler. Tim Legler was considered as a great three-point shooter, right? How many threes was Tim Legler shooting the game for most of those years of his career? One, one and a half, maybe two. So what I'm saying is, if you put those guys in this era where they emphasize shooting threes more, man, them dudes will look like goddamn Steph Curry. Okay. They'll look like Hulk. First of all, we can't evaluate Craig Hodges because the three-point line was further back then. 
Okay. Okay. So now you're saying something that will we'll, you will understand this era a little bit better now. Craig Hodges, right? Tim Legler were three point shooters, right? Right, but they didn't shoot too many. Oh, hold on. They took seven shots a game. Who? Tim Legler took seven shots a game at his best. That right, was his but best career. Fucker averaged eight, nine, eight points a game, which is which is fine. Right, because he's a role player. It's cool. What I'm saying is that same guy today is taking six, five threes, not shots, five threes. How deadly do they become now? I'm with you on that. Hold on. That's my point with you about C-Webb. I'm saying, this is what I'm saying to you, Gil. I want you to check out what I'm saying. I'm saying Chris Webber, in his era, did, could he, he had the three-point shot where he could, he could make a three, but he wasn't shooting it, to, it like that because that was not emphasized. The only big man in that era that was really jacking up threes like that was Rashid Wallace. He was the only one that was really taking a lot of threes. So what I'm saying to you is this. Chris Webber had the three in his arsenal. Well, he did All not have the three like they had. What? Oh, listen, I'm just going to give you your three. Now, what if he got to take it six to seven times a game? Who you talking about? You talking about Chris uh, Webber? Chris Webber? Oh, he'd have probably made about two. Two or three. Are, two are and a half. Are, so he becomes a whole different player, right? Yeah, I'm saying that's that, bro, that's my point. That is today's game, dog. That that's same my point guy to you. Hold on, but that's my point to you. Has that's a three-pointer point now. Homie, that's my point to you. So all I'm saying is, is that so if you, let's take Jokic out of this era right here. Is what I'm saying to you. Okay, out of this era where he can shoot all the threes like he shot. Because remember, in y'all era and the era before, the big man really wasn't shooting too many threes. Like the only one was Rashid. That was really out there stretching the floor, shooting threes. And before Rashid, it was who? It was Cliff Robinson, right? Uncle Cliffy from, from Portland that was really the stretch big man who really revolutionized the stretch big man game. So now, let's look at, let's take Jokic to this era. If you cut out, how many threes is Jokic shooting the game in this era, Gil? Jokic. Like three, right? Like three. He's shooting like three or four, I think. Mm-hmm. So let's take that to let's take that to one because he wouldn't have been shooting those threes in your era or the era back. He's taking he's taking three, right? So let's take that to one back in your era and the era before that. So if he's only shooting one three a game, plus he's playing against the physicality on a night to night basis, all I'm saying to you is is that he's not looking like the same player that we see now. What, 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 oh, okay, okay. Let me let me ask you a question. Go ahead. Homie. If Jokic averages. He's averaging 26 right now. If right. we if we take off and give him 18, his nine assists and his 12 rebounds, is he still great? No, he wouldn't. Okay, let me ask you this. Would he have that if he was playing with you? Because you had the point, the, the ball in your hand most of the time. Was, was there was there any big? Tell me one big in he your has, era. He has a scoring guard. No, no, I'm saying that. No, but chill. Listen to what I'm saying. But you still ran the point, though. Yeah, you are a scoring point guard. But you still had the ball in your hands. I don't know what your usage was. I know it was high. You still had the ball in your hands most of the time. They didn't play like they play with him now. In your era, they never played you with the You can't big. change the rules to, to prove your point. No, I'm not you changing the rules. No, no, no. I'm not changing the rules. Not changing the rules. You have to do what they do. If you want to say great defense, okay, we bring them down. So, Jokic, so Jokic, Gil, if Jokic was playing with you in Washington, you think he would be playing the same type of basketball he's playing right now with you? I'm, I'm yep. talking about the same way he's able to play. You think they would let him play then? Yes. I disagree, bro. And the reason here's the reason, only reason why I disagree with you. And you was there. You got your own right to say because you was there. I ain't going to knock you for that. I respect it. I'm saying that because in your era, for the most part, the point hey, guard hey, ran the here, offense. Hey, ask, hey, Kwame, in the chat, if Jokic was in our offense, how many assists would he average in our offense? But I'm saying, I'm saying it wouldn't be as high as it is now, Gil, because you had the ball more. Unless you're giving the ball up and moving without the rock. I played in the Princeton offense, dog. I know you did. You played with Eddie, jo Eddie Jordan in the Princeton well, offense. I'm playing, I'm playing in the same offense that Chris Webber played in. Right. So if Chris Webber at the four man is getting a bunch of assists, now give that shit to Jokic. But who was, but what's his point guard? <laughs> did the point guard have the ball as much as you had it? Mike Bibby then. No, I'm saying no, but Mike Bibby ain't do what you were doing. I, I'm in the same offense. No, I'm saying no, no, Gil. You was in the 
Thank you. The same you reason thank you. Yeah. Thank thank you. You're you a funny nigga. Hey, you're a funny nigga, my nigga. You the only nigga that I know that was in the Princeton offense that broke that shit every time, nigga. Yes, but what I'm saying is the ball, <laughs> the ball is not in my hand like that. That's why I only average five or six. That's not, oh, bro, your usage is crazy. How is it in your hand? You was the one taking the most shots. This here's how your shots was going to y'all's team. You, Twan Jameson, and God dag on what's his name? Um, you and Twan and um, let me pull up. Forget who else it was. I, I already know who y'all's team was. But you and Antoine was taking most of the shots. Taking most of the shot doesn't mean the ball is in our hands. No, I'm saying, but you had the ball in your hands. Look I at had the offense, and I found the – what I'm saying is that we had a offense. I wasn't coming down doing pick and roll and sitting here with the ball like that. No, I pass the ball. We run offense. I'm back cutting. I'm slashing. I'm doing this. And because I knew the offense so well, I found out how to cheat it to score. But didn't most of your points come on the ball? No, posting up. I did. I no, 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 no. What I mean by that is, most of your points came with you creating. No, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, your own bucket. I, I, no. deal, I watch you breaking niggas down, pulling up for threes. <laughs> fucking hibachi, nigga. The fuck no, you talking no, about, nigga? No, this no, nigga no, shooting threes from half court, y'all. Putting his fucking hands up, walking across half court. The shit going in. They want nobody passing that nigga the ball when that's, he did that shit. We watch it, nigga. That, that's the ISO game. That's four. That's that's. That's what that's, you did, though, nigga. You, said the, you was an actual. Fucking break down. The the Get the fuck out my way. I'm getting a bucket, nigga. That was you. That's the end of the quarter. Nigga, that's the whole goddamn nigga. I'm what? Nigga, I grew up with, bro, listen. I'm the same age as you, bro. I grew up all in y'all, bro. No, I grew you up on your era. You, you watched the highlights that came on TV. Nigga, I watched the whole fucking game. Nigga. How about this? Go, go, go. What game do you want to go to? You can go to any game tonight, watch it all. <laughs> Watch, watch the whole game, and then watch how I scored. Bro, y'all seen this nigga? Let me tell y'all something. Gil don't know. I fuck with Gil. The nigga was goddamn hibachi, nigga. He was the hibachi grill, and the nigga you should have fucking went and got goddamn <laughs> marketed that shit. Like you're debating me on how I played the game. Because we saw you. Nigga, we you seen you coming down, pulling up from Afghanistan, nigga. We seen it. When? We seen the crossover. We seen the, the crossover. Go show, show me the go show the highlights. Then show the time and we score <laughs> of those games. Yo, so this nigga, listen. So I know he played the Princeton offense because that's what Eddie George ran. Eddie George, uh, Eddie Jordan. I like Eddie Jordan, but that's what he ran. You came down consistently, broke the offense and got buckets. You were the bailout, nigga. You was the one that was out there getting, so it was you, him, the you, bailout. So and when, the Butler was, on the same when the game. offense broke down and we couldn't score. I finished the play. Yes. That's they said, the they said you were scoring on one four flat plays most of the time. When? What part of the game was that? <laughs> that this is not that my game wasn't this NBA where I get the ISO anytime I want. If I got to do what they did right now, Antoine wouldn't have averaged 20, Karan wouldn't have averaged 20. The 5 4 3 2 1 came in the end of quarter. In the half, in the game, out of bounds, mad mismatches. If they did fuck around and switch on accident, then I will go. Other other than that, I, I th th we, we were in the offense, forwards out, and all that stuff. We was, running, we was running regular offense. Gill in his prime, walking fucking bucket. Nigga was thirty seven from the three, twenty shots a game, twenty point nine a game. This is in fucking. Uh, 2005, 2006. This is this is Agent Zero, nigga. I know this motherfucker. But you got to watch the nigga. I watch the nigga coming you're up. Not. So you hold on. You took 20.9. You're right. Antoine took 18.2, and Karan took 14 and a half that year. You're right. Now, now, now hold on. Now you take us three, right? Mm-hmm. Take us three, right? When you when you want to talk about this era. Us three. Now, who is a better three? Booker, KD, and Beal. Who's a, who's a better three? Who's a more potent three from scoring? I would have to say Booker, KD, and Beal. Okay, me too. Right? Now, our center was Brendan Haywood. Their right. center is Nurkic. Right. right? Our shooting guard was... Deshaun Stevenson. Stevenson, right? Their shooting guard 
is Grayson Allen. Mm -hmm. So if we tried to guard them, we will have to come off of Grayson Allen to stop any one of them who has a 52% a 52% clip from the three-point line. Yeah, but that's hold on, but that's because them niggas ain't playing no D. No, that's that nigga because shooting that, that nigga ain't shooting that shit in your era. Nigga, y'all niggas had Antonio Daniels on y'all team. That nigga gonna play exactly. I'm saying so you had niggas who ran Antonio Daniels. So what does that happen? So that means when I'm on offense, their defense looks a lot better. Because we have Antonio Gaines on our team. Hey, y'all, y'all, this nigga Gil. Think about, what right I'm, think about what I'm saying, dog. Right. We have Antonio Daniels on the team. So when I'm trying to go, what is Antonio man is doing? Right? He's going to help. Now, on, on our defense, I'm guarding Antonio Dan I'm guarding Grayson Allen. Why would I leave Grayson Allen? He shoots 52% from the three-point line. That's, but that's my point. The nigga shoot that in his weak-ass era. He would not shoot that in your era. He wouldn't be nowhere near that is what I'm saying because niggas was actually playing defense. That's my point to you. D these niggas in this era, Grayson Allen is getting 29 points in some games in this what? era. That would be unheard of of him to have multiple points. Why is he getting... <laughs> Ticket, think, think about what I'm saying. <laughs> Bro, you know you talking some shit. That motherfucker ain't getting no three 28-point games in your goddamn era. Right? He's not. Why, why wouldn't he? Because niggas playing D, my nigga. You know that. Who? Okay, so when 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 KD decides to go one-on-one -on -one and he's murking us, what do we have to do? Full <laughs> bro, we have bro, full man. Do, do, okay, oh, okay, do what Boston did, my nigga. When? What year? The, the nigga, the last three years. Oh yeah, I mean uh, the last three years. You want to use you want to use the the year when Boston beat him in the playoffs and went to the championship and they kept doubling KD because there's no. I'm, James no yeah, I'm talking about when he was playing for. That, I'm talking about when he was playing for Brooklyn at last. Yeah, year. when he was playing yeah, for Brooklyn and they didn't have no James Harden and the rest of the team was starting as just him and um and nah, actually, him, was ball, him and Kyrie was being double teamed the whole time. You ain't gonna get away with that, Gil. You're not gonna get away with that because the role players ball in that series. And that series, that was on Katie and Kyrie. The role players ball. The, the both of the role players. Well, why, did the, why did the role players ball, dog? Because it was supposed to. All I'm because saying is, though, is that hold they on. You, you, you're, now, you're, now you're now you're now you're contradicting yourself. The role players was balling because of Boston was doing what to the main players. Yeah, I mean, bro, it's, him, right? It was so how can you not say Grayson Allen will score, will have 52 if we got to stop Kevin Durant and Beal and Booker? Bro, that means okay, they bro, this shit, open. This season, the guy yeah. that's open is the guy that's shooting 52% now. First of all, now, you know, this if season, we never had the double Kevin Durant or never had the double Beal or never had the double anybody, yes, Grayson Allen wouldn't shoot 52% because I wouldn't have to go guard anybody. I wouldn't have to go help my man. Yo, I'm pulling up the goddamn Gills Arena. Yo. No, because it's I can't help hey, my hey, man. Hey, Gil. So, so, Gil, so now, this year, right now, Grayson Allen, as of right now, he's shooting 47. It went down to 47 from the three. He leads the NBA in three-point shooting this year. No other year has he even shot nowhere near 45, 44, 43. He was coming in. He had two years where he shot 40, which was good. And he had he's basically been around 40 his career, 41 for his career, right? Mm -hmm. So he's been a real good three-point shooter in, the, in this era in his career. And all it goes with why. Right. No, no. All, all I'm saying to you is this. I'm not saying that he can't shoot the ball. I'm saying this. I'm saying the explosions that he have, he would not be, he would be more of a Steve Kerr like type of player in, in y'all's era. He would not be out here getting 28, 29 points multiple games. But you're not asking why. See, you're saying it, but you're not actually trying to think it. You just want to, you're just arguing the point and not. He has fucking Kevin Durant, Beal, and Booker on his team. So that's way more shot attempts open versus where he was before, dog. Mm hmm. Be where he was before, he did not have three, three, three dudes that can score 30, which keeps the defense guarding them, which means all his shots are wide open. Now you're taking a guy who is shooting 40% with Giannis in that team. You add fucking three more Giannis's. He's wide open, 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 open now. Gil, how much You're not trying to give the guys the credit. He's open because there's more danger on the court. Is it more danger on the court or guys just can't play defense the way they used to? 
Booker is on the court. No, I'm asking you. No, no, I, I, hold on. I don't get Think it. about Listen. what I'm saying. Booker is on the court. KD is on the court. Right. Right. And right. Bill is on the court. Right. In, in the history in my era, name me a team that had three niggas on a team that played like that. Please do. You probably had, let me see. Uh, I would say the run and gun. Uh, I would say that the Nelly Ball team. I wouldn't say they had three players on that level. They did have they had, did have great offensive players though. They had uh, these. You could say, hold on, but you let me. I'm, I'm going to get a point to what you just said about the shooting, right? Okay, so let's look at a team like the the B three, the Miami Heat, right? Now mm -hmm. they had guys who were getting wide open shots based off their offense, right? But you wasn't seeing those main guys. Here, here's my point to you, Gil. Those guys in your era wasn't. Yes, you got the superstars would get double team. But it, you didn't see it as much. You didn't because guys was able to guard their men one on one for the most part. So, for example, if we saw elite matchups, uh, if you're guarding a point guard, if, if, let's just say you playing against uh, another elite point guard in the league, is you and Tony Parker? Okay. They're not going to come down and just double team you every single time crossing half court. They're they're playing one on one. They're they're fighting through screens. They're playing fo solid fundamental basketball. Now is what what I'm saying is is now the game has I'm I'm saying the game has changed so much now to where it, it's a it, it's a laziness of guys not taking that matchup uh, like they used to take it like for example uh, anytime Kobe played T Mac it was no double teams I'm one, we're one on one straight up so when you saw the elite matchups when you're talking about multiple guys go back and look at the Bulls series when they played those teams in the in the playoffs you know what I'm saying and damn dog they said AG just just got hurt again man. The Kobe scored. What year did Kobe score at um, <clears throat> eighty points against Toronto? That was in two thousand and six. No, seven. Six, seven. No, six, seven. Yeah, six, seven. Yeah. All right. That had to be Let me ask you a question. Two thousand and six. Let me ask you a question, real quick. I mean, you can be right. be honest. You can Go be ahead, honest with it. Wait, man, I, hey, give I fuck with you, my G. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, just, just so you can see. You capping though? You capping? No. I fuck with you. You capping though, nigga? All right, Kobe Bryant scored 81 points, right? Right. Was Smush Parker a, a three point shooter? No. Okay, so I'm going to sit in the lane, right? We're going to sit in the lane. All right, was Lamar Odom a three-point shooter? No. So we're going to sit in the lane on him. Was was Kwame Brown a three-point shooter? Nah. So we're going to sit in the lane on him. We're going to clog the lane. Was Chris Mims a three-point shooter? Nah. So we're going to sit on the lane on him, right? Devin George. Yeah, he did shoot the three to a, a little bit, but not. He wasn't a good. He wasn't a great three point shooter. No, I'm saying he, he was one of the guys that would spread the floor for them, but he wasn't a. He wasn't no knockdown three point shooter. Luke Walton. No. Okay, so the best three point shooter was probably Sasha. Who you choose? He played 13 minutes, mm -hmm. and Brian Cook, who played right. seven minutes. Now, now all these guys that played. Did not right. shoot the three. Could not shoot the three. Did not shoot the three. That mm -hmm. means when Kobe had the ball, everybody guarded Kobe, right? right. He had 81. N now they started double teaming him late in that game. And he they, still they, had they were singling him. They were singling him. And then once he got to around 60, they sent double teams out of the rest of the game. Now when he passes the ball, he don't have a he don't have a guy that's gonna hit a three that takes the double off. Right. And he still had 81. What happens if there's a Grayson Allen, a Beal, and the Vua check on the team also? Then you can never double Kobe. Kobe averages fucking 48 a game. See, Kobe averaged 35 a game with a group of guys who did not spread the floor whatsoever for him. What if you give him today's lineups where you have a your worst shooter is Grayson, your worst player is Grayson Allen. Then you give him a Beal on the team, a, a second option guy who can average 30. How do you guard that dude then? If the Kobe was they, in his the era. Same way, the same way they guarded him with Sasha Vujic was on the court. But Sasha Vujic was going to take three shots? 
Right, but I don't see Grayson Allen getting that many shots with, with Kobe in that era. But he will. Because what's, he, the what's, the, what's, the, what's the what's the big difference between you between Sasha Vujicic and, and um and Grayson Allen? Uh, one one he's a better he's a better player. Two, he's a better shooter. Three, he's gonna take the shot. See, Grayson Allen, hold on, but let me say this to you: He didn't make none of them shits when he played the last year with the Milwaukee Bucks when Giannis was kicking that shit out to him and they lost that goddamn series to the Boston Celtics. He missed every one wide open. Hey, what what? How I don't. Great, I know you're gonna do it, Gil. No, no, no. I know you, how you great, don't like. How Giannis. great? You don't like Giannis. I know you're gonna do it, though. No, I like Giannis. How great would the Lakers be if we take away Prince and put in Grayson Allen? How easy would it be? To, right now, Torian yeah. Prince. Yeah, if we take it, away it, Torian I, Prince, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be easier because the Lakers need defense. No, what if we, if we take what? No, no, no. Fuck the defense. How easier would it be for AD and LeBron to get to the rim? Oh, you talking about offensively? You talking about offensively? If Grayson oh, okay, Allen. no, no, no. Okay, no. Nah, it would be better offensively. I agree with you okay. on that. But, they, but okay. you would suffer. So you have, you okay. would suffer defensively, Gil. So what you're saying? So exact, exact. Thank you. But that's my point. My that, point is thank defense. you though. Because you, you, you thinking offense? I'm thinking defense, bro. Yes. So because they're putting guys like a Grayson Allen for offense to take away the defense right the other team has to match it so now your defensive player who only plays defense is not worth nothing anymore but so you, you don't come in, Darvin, but you criticize you you, you, hold if on, you don't come, see, this, this this one thing you do though gil you criticizing darvin ham on over on gil's arena for this now when he doesn't have when he don't have those options if, if he puts out a guy and i've heard you say this before so i know you've pointed this out but when he puts out a guy, Gil, that plays defense like a Vanderbilt, right, mm -hmm. but has no offensive game, mm -hmm. how can you then turn around and criticize him when you're coming on here saying, oh, well, what if you play Grayson Allen, who is an undersized guy who ain't going to be able to defend some of the bigger wings and the perimeter guys. It's the same game. game. I would rather have Grayson Allen in the game because he can spread the floor more for LeBron James. Why would I want a guy in the game who cannot hit a shot? Because your defense, your defense, you're going to give me two points a game and you're going to guard a dude who's trying to score 30. How does that even out? We lose that matchup. So give me a guy who's going to spread the floor to even out the scoring balance. See, you're thinking defense. Everybody else now is thinking offense. So I, if you're going to put in... But do you always learn that defense wins championships? Bullshit. If you're going to put in... If you're gonna, <laughs> Every team that won, every team that won a championship, damn near, was top five, top ten in the league or top five defensively. So damn near, was, every team in the history of the NBA that won a championship. So who was the lockup defender on the the, the the Denver Nuggets? Who was the, who was the great defenders on the Denver Nuggets? No one ever talked about. No one. Okay, ever. Casey. Hold on. KCP is a very good perimeter defender. Who did also, you got Aaron Aaron Gordon was a very good perimeter defender for them. Mm -hmm. Who did they stop? They just, what do you mean, I, who do they stop? They just outscored everyone, dog. That's not true. Bro, the Lakers couldn't even score 120 points in, them in, in most of those why games. The Lakers were scoring like 104, 105 why points. Why couldn't they score 100 points? Because LeBron James ain't as great as y'all say he is. <sighs> y'all say he make everybody better? That's what y'all say. Y'all okay. say he the GOAT, he make everybody better. Okay, so we're just gonna go to the. You also gonna, had Bruce. Hold on, you also had Bruce Brown on the team. And what did Bruce Brown? Defender. And what is Bruce? And what did Bruce Brown do, dog? Oh, he was a great defender, and he was a great uh uh. uh role player. Care, what, he, what, what did them niggas do on offense, sir? He gave you like what fourteen points a game? Is yeah, almost yeah, yeah, yeah. Gave you fourteen points a game. Fourteen the, points a game while he's guarding the dude, giving you two. Okay, now, see, yeah, hey, hey y'all, now see this week, then now, now we're gonna give ass. Now y'all watch it, Paul. Yeah. Listen, so now, so Gil, let's. I want to go to this because you so did how this, good this last thing. This, this last thing really score more than two points because you did no because you did this, and then I'm glad we get into this because now we're gonna go to this. So, Doc Rivers, boy, you one of the okay, so you one of the biggest critics of a guy. Now, uh, now let me let you explain for why. What's your issue with Doc? He's trash. Why is it? Explain that. I just want you to explain why. Because you, you you never have you ever played for Doc? Did Doc ever coach you? Nope. So what was it? Why do you think Doc is trash from your analysis on what you're watching? Um, he doesn't know how to sub. 
He doesn't know how to game plan. He doesn't know how to adjust his game plan after timeouts, after halftime, in the fourth quarter when the team goes and runs. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't know how to change uh, play to play. So if you're beating him in game one with the play, you're going to beat him the rest of the series with the same play because he's never going to adjust to it. Okay, let me ask you a question. If you're trash, how are you top six or seven all-time in coaching as far as wins? And how was that? No, I'm, I'm asking you a question because he didn't always have superstars on his team. He did. He coached teams. He coached teams that went to the playoffs without superstars too, with the Clippers. Um, I he don't coached, mean. He, coached, mean, he was a coach mean, of the year. I don't mean the was, Wasn't he the coach of the year? Hold on, hold, Gil. Wasn't he the coach of the year with Orlando when everybody didn't have no expectations for that Orlando team with T Mac? Do you want to do this? Um, well, let's, hey, bro. Let's uh, metal to the pedal, my nigga. All right, so we'll do it. Here, I'll do it for so you. So he was a coach of the year with Orlando. Uh huh. In two thousand, right. he was coach of the year with Orlando, with a team that wasn't expected to do anything with T Mac. I don't know why they wasn't expected to do anything because the year before he got there, the team was thirty three and seventeen. They won six. They won. They won sixty six percent of their games. Right. They won sixty six percent of their games under Chuck Daly. The year Doc got there, Doc went forty one and forty one. Didn't make the playoffs. One coach of the year with the worst percentage the league has ever seen for a coach of the year. Yeah, hold, on, let's stay, hold on, because let's stay, hold on, let's stop, let's stop right there. Oh, you want to stop? And you got hold on, but you got to put context in it. No chill. Put what, what, context what, in it. What, he didn't have T Mac that year. Forty-one and no, no, but he didn't have T Mac. His best player was who? Daryl Armstrong out of Fayetteville State University, Division Two, in CIAA basketball. Those were his best players. It was Daryl Armstrong and um I forget who else it was. It was Daryl because that season before was a shortened season. So mm -hmm. yeah, Chuck Daly, Chuck Daly, they did they had a shortened season. They got beat in the first round, and Chuck Daly was out. Okay, cool. I give you that. Doc comes back the next year. They don't have T Mac. T Mac was not there that first year. T Tracy McGrady was not on that team. The All best right. player on that team, the best player on that team that year was Daryl Armstrong. It was Daryl Armstrong, Ron Mercer, and Bo Outlaw was on that team. Those are the guys that was on that team. T Mac was not on that team. Hey, 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 hey. Who was it? So if T Mac wasn't in the league yet, who the fuck was there the year before? No, no, no. T Mac no, no. was with Toronto. T Mac was with Toronto. He was in the league. Who was on there the year before then? What magical guy was on there the year before? Let me guess. That? Hold on. Uh, hold the on. Same I'm niggas you, the same niggas you named. No, no. I'm saying, no, no. I'm saying, <laughs> but the year before that, hold on. The year before that, they had Penny, right? They had Penny that year, year before that. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to cook you now, Gil. They had Penny. They had Nick Anderson still on that team. They had Ho Grant, and they had Daryl Armstrong. And they had Bo Outlaw. And they had Matt Harpering out of Georgia Tech. So they had a way better team. I'm going to cook your ass down, no chill. Well, it's Straight up, 41 now, and 41, year. and you give year. him play coach of the year. No, no, I'm saying he came the next year. Hold on. He came the next year. All those main guys was gone. Penny, all those dudes was gone the next year. So his best player the next year was Daryl Armstrong, a Division II guy who made it. I don't in the give league. a fuck who was on the team. Your record is 41 and 41. And the, Gil, you if you don't, don't have the personnel. The dog, stop. You don't make the playoffs. What do you mean? You didn't make the playoffs. I'm you won one in 41, and you won Coach of the Year, which is the worst in NBA history. Gil, he did Gil. If you if your team is forty one okay, and forty one is forty one and forty one. Let me ask you a question, Gil. Let me ask you a question. If you lose a lot of your star I players, I don't give a fuck if you team, lose Michael no, no, motherfucking I'm, I'm, I'm Jordan. I'm asking you a question, Gil. If you are projected to be a lottery team, bro, you're projected to be a lot a ten win team, and you win forty one games. Without no superstars, without T-Mac, no superstars. Your best player, Daryl Armstrong, and you win 41 games. Come on, bro. You won so 40. You're picked, you picked to win 15 games. You win 41. You won That's like 41 games. And he was picked to win 15. I don't give a fuck what he was projected to make. He won only 41 games. That's, but that's what your best player being, Daryl Armstrong. Whose fault is that? The teams. Remember, Penny Hardaway got hurt. 
I, I don't and care. And he moved, he moved on. He, he moved on. Terry Hardaway, Terry Hardaway. Terry Hardaway. Terry Hardaway. You can't change this to worse in NBA history. You can't change it. That's the fact. You can change and his players was this and you can give you any scenario that you want to make it make sense. It's the worst in NBA history and he has it. Right? Now, now let's 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 keep it moving. He was a he was a losing coach every year. Mm-hmm. 21 and 61, 36 and 46, 36 and 46, 40 and 42, right? Then he gets fired. Then he goes to where? Where'd he go to? Boston? No, 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 hold, hold, hold. no, 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 no. We're gonna we gotta do the Orlando properly. So he won the 41 the first year. You cooked him for that, right? That was with Daryl Armstrong as his best player. I don't give a fuck so, if oh, okay, okay, so let's get past that. Let's get past that. Okay, so let's get past that then. Okay, cool. So then the next year, T Mac comes from um from Toronto. Mm-hmm. They make the playoffs, right? Mm-hmm. So and they lose to the Bucks with Sam Cassell, Ray Allen. Won two, so they got T Mac, right? And they right. won two more games. Okay. Right. They went to the playoffs, right? Mm-hmm. And they and, they, and and they lost to the, the big three over in Milwaukee in the first round. Okay. Okay. So th- the next year, they won 44 games. So they, so they got better games. the next year. They, they got a game better the next year. From his original. Okay. Right. They got they got better the next year. They mm-hmm. won four games. And that year they lost in the playoffs. They mm-hmm. lost to to that Hornets team with uh, Baron Davis. Well, they have Tracy and- McGrady on the team. They don't. They have a superstar now, and they they got three more games than he did when he won Coach of the Year. Okay, let's go. Right. So I'm, what I'm saying to you is this. Okay. So they, then they lost that year to mm-hmm. Charlotte to, to mm-hmm. Baron Davis and the Charlotte team, David Wesley and all those guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, big Cat, Jamal McGlure. You remember all those guys? PJ Brown, mm-hmm. all those guys. They mm-hmm. lost to those guys. Now remember, T Mac's second best player that year was uh, Daryl Armstrong. That was his second best player. Darryl, so Daryl's now number two. When he was number one, he won 41 games. Now he's number two. They won 43 games. Okay. Right. But you got to also put into context what happened that year, too, that they won 40, uh, uh, the, the year they won 43 games. What happened? Well, Grant Hill only played four games that year. I didn't even, who gives a fuck about Grant Hill? You got Tracy McGrady. You won 41 with, with, that was, with oh, no, but, but, but that was, had, but wait, hold on. You had, when you won 41 games, you had just their Armstrong. Then I give you Mike Miller and and Tracy Mike, McGrady. Mike Miller was a rookie, right? And you won three more games. I, what, Mike what, 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 you won Mike Miller was games, a, Mike Miller was a rookie, right? Okay, you have Tracy McGrady. Okay, you, cool. You can't and, and, and that was before. Hold on, that not was having a superstar. Was, and then we give you one, and you only do three more was, games. Hold on, hold on, hold on, chill. But that was before T Mac became T Mac. That was his first year in Orlando, coming from coming from uh, uh, Toronto. Okay, cool. So then you go to the next year, right? The very next year, like I said. Okay, let's. We already talked about that. Now let's go to the. The, the uh, year after that, right, where they lost to the Pistons. Now, they were up 3-1 in that series, and T-Mac said, yo, I'm happy that we're going to the second round. And then they got walked down by Ben Wallace and the Pistons mm-hmm. and lost that series, right? Okay, so that's the one series, the first series Doc Rivers lost. He was up 3-1. That was the first one he lost, up 3-1, right? Mm-hmm. So now let me ask you this question, right? How many first-round series did T-Mac win after that without Doc Rivers? Probably none. So why are we blaming? Why we do we crush Doc Rivers? Okay. When a dude, hold, hold on. When a dude who played with guys like Yao Ming and all these other guys could not even win a series without him, he couldn't even get the first round without Doc. So how is that on Doc, Gil? Okay. Now let's move on. So we let's move on. Now what? No, I'm asking, but how is that on Doc? I want you to answer that one question. You blame? You said Doc wasn't shit, right? Okay, cool. So we started with Orlando. T Mac hadn't won shit without Orlando. He had he had the nigga had Yao Ming a year a year or two and could not get out the first round. He had good teams with the with the uh with the fucking uh Houston Rockets. Uh look at those squads they had. He okay, could not so, get out the first round. So, so, Doc was oh, not coaching those teams. So how right, was so, that on Doc? Okay, so let's blame. So we're gonna say the reason that he didn't really excel in Orlando is because of T Mac. Okay, I'll give you that. No, I'm, no I'm talking about the 3-1. I'm talking about the 3-1. I'm talking about when you said, you, you, you coach, said, Doc, you his, said Doc lost the most 3-1s. So I, I agree coach, with you. I agree coaching, with you. Right? It's his coaching, no, I, right? It's a, hold on. My nigga, it's a fact. I agree with you on that. But all I'm saying is, is you don't put that shit in the context. Okay. So when we put it in the context, my nigga, the shit look different. Whose game plan is it, sir? 
So his game plan wasn't every other year he wasn't coaching for football. Okay, Wait, so let's blame let's blame T Mac in Orlando. Cool. Now let's go yo, to Boston. This nigga, yo, this nigga Gil Now let's go to bucket. Boston, ticket. Okay, let's go to okay. So wh- what happens his first year in Boston? The nigga win 45 games, right? Let me let's go. Let's go to Boston. Right. Let's, when let's, he went 45 games, he went 45 games that first year in Boston, right? With Antoine Jameson and uh and what year Paul did he go Jameson. to Boston? And guess what? Hold on. And guess what, my nigga? He won 45 games, and guess what? Twan Walker was hurt most of the season, my nigga. Stand on it. Stand on it. Um, Twan Walker was hurt most of that season when he went to Boston. Yeah, Gil. Yeah, oh, yeah I'm, sure. I'm, I'm, finna, I'm finna pack you up, my nigga. And a year before that, you can't talk that shit. Because a year before that, guess what, my nigga? They won 30 motherfucking six games. You had Antoine Walker, who, who was the second best player on the team, averaging Only 16. played 24 games that year. Okay, but you had you had uh, Paul Pierce, who averaged 21, who was the best player. He on was the team. on the year before when they won 36 games. Didn't make no difference. They lost. Okay, eight, eight. but you have Paul Pierce. Is the, you're talking about the second best player gone. Fuck him. What about the first best player? Right, He's that's there. my, hold on. But that's my point, Gil. That's He's my point. There. He's still, he won 10 more games the next year. And fucking okay. Antoine Walker was hurt. Now what? So, so he comes on a team with two bona fide stars. They win 45 games. Congratulations. Now what? 45 you, games. Now what? Well, okay, Antoine Walker was hurt. Let's, most do of Doc, let's do what Doc usually do. He gets there the first year. They're very well. Then from there, it goes downhill. Okay, let's cool. Okay, now. so let's look at that. Okay, so let's look at that. So you the next year... He only won 33 games the next year. Mm. How about right? the year after that? Now, why, hold on, hold on, hold on, dog, hold on, hold on. We got, we got, we got to put some. We got, we got to look at this now. Why did they only win 33 games that next yeah, year? Give me, give me your reason. Okay, the reason will be is when Wally Zerbiak, your starter, your starting guard, only plays 32, 31, 32 games. So the second, so and the, also Ricky, yeah, they're also Ricky Davis, who was your second best player, only plays 42 games, <laughs> and Antoine Jameson ain't even there. Antoine, I mean, Walker? Antoine Walker, excuse me, Antoine Walker ain't even there. Was Paul so Pierce Antoine, there? So hold on, so Antoine Walker ain't there, my nigga. Was Paul Ricky Pierce Davis, there? Ricky Davis only played 42 games, and Wally Zerbiak only played 32 games. Was Paul, Paul Pierce, Pierce played 79. Okay, so, okay, so you lose. Okay, cool. Next, next year. So okay, go to the next year. That that your team Go to the next year. Okay, so the next year, so the next year, it get uglier than a masterpiece. Nigga. Can I ask you so, something? I just want to be, be, so when, so when he was in Orlando, right, Right, he had no superstar. Right, who was his best player again? Just to remind everybody, it was Daryl Armstrong. Daryl Armstrong. Shout to DA. Daryl Daryl Armstrong, and he won how many games? 41. He won forty one games. Okay, then when he goes into Orlando, he has when he goes to Boston, he has a fucking Paul Pierce. Right, and you want to tell me what he don't have? Well, the East was better that time. You were bragging on him. You was telling me who he had. The East had gotten better that year. Remember, you were in the league. Hold on. You were in the league. These are facts. I'm going to give you the facts. I'm going to give you the facts. I'm going to give you the facts. I'm not going to do this. You were bragging when he had no talent in one. Now he has better than the Orlando team. And you want to you want to talk about who's missing. Shit. Talent was missing when he won. No, 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 no. I agree. Hold on, Gil. I agree with your point. Talent, talent was missing. They I had agree. No on, Gil, I agree with your point. Two things can be true. I agree with your point that the talent was better. He had t- better talent with Paul Pierce in Boston. But guess what? The competition was better, my nigga. You know why? Okay, now, okay. Hold on, LeBron James. Hold on, LeBron James was in the league at this time now. So oh, LeBron's oh, in the oh, league. Oh, He's oh, in the East. You're oh, in the East. Oh, All you guys are in the East now. Oh, so okay. the competition okay. was better. So they can't win because there's Bell and Town. Okay, now no, go no, no, with the no, next. no, 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 no. You asked me, hold on. You asked me why he won oh, less games, God. and I'm telling you, hold on. The talent was better. I'm not making this shit up, my nigga. The talent was better in the East that year. The teams that was winning, the teams that were the better teams was the Nets, the Raptors, Detroit, Cleveland, the Bulls, the Heat, and you guys. What are you talking about? It was you, the Heat. The Cavs, the Pistons, the Nets, and the Raptors. Big Ben were all these. So the East was stronger. What are you talking about? So you had the Pistons that went to six Eastern Conference Finals. The Detroit Pistons. They went to six straight Eastern Conference Finals. You was in the league, and you guys were competitive at the time because y'all was running into LeBron and the Cavs in the, in the playoffs. Right? Then you had the Chicago Bulls that was winning 49 games over there. The Bulls was, the Bulls was solid. Right? Then you also had the Raptors who were winning 47 games. 
And then you had the New Jersey Nets who were right around the same level as y'all. So we're going to pretend back when Doc was playing, right, because the talent, because, I mean, obviously, only when Doc won 41 games, the talent was just magically fucking gone. You right. wasn't there. You was hold on. You there was, was in no, Cali. There was no. There was no Pacers that was good. There you was, was no in heat. Cali, my nigga. There was no Pacers that was good. There was no Heat that was good. There was no Knicks and you was in Cali. You was in Cali. You was in Cali. LeBron what? was in high school. What? You were in Cali. Hold on, I'm about to tell you. We're talking about the talent in the league, right? right? I'm talking about the Eastern Conference. I'm talking about the Eastern Conference. Conference. So the Pacers who won fifty fucking six games wasn't there. That just magically gone. The Heat that won 52 games, they didn't exist. The fucking Knicks won 50 games, they didn't exist. Hornets won 49 games. Fucking Allen Iverson, 49 games, they didn't exist. Somehow, those no, no, no. I'm teams talking about, didn't hold on, I'm at 2000. Hold on, I'm at 2000. Rivers magical team was balling. I'm at, hold on, I'm at 2005, 2006, 2006, 2007. You're, I think you're I'm before talking that. about when, when 41 and 41 was coach of the year. Oh, 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 okay. No, okay. No, hold on. Let's go back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, no, hold on. I, now, I agree with you. Hold on. I, now, you're going back to Orlando days. I th I'm thinking you're talking about Boston days. Okay, cool. I'm, talk so, I'm talking about when you said the 40 and 41 team, there was no talent in the league. And I'm no, I didn't, you, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I said the talent in the East was better when he was coaching with Boston. That's what I said. So how about when they? How about when the Pacers was brutes and they, the Heat was killing and the Knicks was killing and the Hornets was killing and the 76ers was killing? They wasn't better than. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now I'm finna cook you for real. They wasn't better than the Bulls and D Rose and then when D Rose and then when Who gives a MVP fuck about the team? You got the, the the teams is better. You have better talent. What is the argument here? The argument is my nigga. They yeah, had better, had better talent too. So what is the argument? <laughs> Bro, he has better it. talent. He has superstars on his. He didn't have them before. Okay, cool. He has them now to adjust with everybody else. What is the problem? He had the problem is Antoine Jameson didn't play one whole season. The next other season, he only played twenty four games. You're moving the second best player, trying to make an argument when when he did win, he didn't even ha the the best player on his team was a guy's fourth best player. So he's yeah. running a team with Daryl Armstrong as his best player, and that is your credit. Now, let me, when okay, okay, let me, let me, let me. Let me. When he has an all-star, you're going <laughs> to remove the second best player to make an argument. So let me say what I'm saying to you. Here's my point to you. My point to you is this. When D, when he was coaching with the Orlando Magic, yes, he had a weaker number one guy in Daryl Armstrong versus having a star in Paul Pierce. My point was this. My point was is that the competition in the teams he played the most in the East was weaker than it was when he coached in Boston with Paul Pierce. So what I'm saying to you is this. Yes, he had a weaker number one guy, but when Paul Pierce came, when he came in the league and coached Paul Pierce, his second guy, Antoine Walker, was out. And guess what? LeBron James what? is in the league. Well, why are you You're making the, why you keep removing the second best player? At least remove the first best player to make your argument. You're moving a nigga who averaged 16. Fuck him. How about Paul Pierce? He's not good enough? He was hurt. Hold on. So wasn't wasn't is Paul Pierce not good enough for Doc? I'm not saying that, my nigga. I'm just saying, bro, that the league got better. You asked why they didn't win more is, games. I'm Paul Pierce alone wasn't good enough for Doc to win. Just say yes. So we can yes, move on. Yes, nigga, he was, nigga, okay. he was not. Nigga, nigga, okay. he was going to get, hold on. Okay, so he's going to get you. Keep going. He wasn't good enough, so let's go on. So he's going, hold on. He's going to get y'all squad. Y'all had a squad. Ah, we weren't even all sorry. He wasn't good enough to coach Paul Pierce. Now let's move on. What do you mean wasn't good Doc, enough to coach Paul Pierce? What else do Doc need? Because an all-star, a Hall of Famer, wasn't good enough to win, but he could win with some nigga who won't even be Was, he there? Was he there at that time? So he wasn't good enough. Now let's go on to the next year. Boy, you a capping ass nigga, my nigga. So he wasn't good enough the next year either then. So, so Doc then became a good coach when he got what? That's because bullshit. he wasn't good enough with one or he two. He already had multiple winning seasons before he even coached the superstars. But guess what? Let, let's do that. Let's, wait, wait, let's wait, do wait. that. Said, let's do that. Hold on. Let's, hold on. Let's do that. Multiple winning so seasons. To, yeah, in the league, he already had, he, he already had like three or four winning seasons in the league as a head coach and a coach of the year before he coached the superstar. Now let's do that. The nigga never had more than forty-five wins in a game. No, I said he had multiple winning seasons. What is a winning season? <laughs> what is a winning season to you? He won a, He he had multiple winning seasons. I'm giving you facts and. The nigga won a coach of the year before he coached a superstar. With 41 and 41. With his best players, Daryl Armstrong.
Armstrong, yes, he won a coach of the year. 41 and 41. Don't forget that. We're not talking about he won 60 games and 59 games. 41 and 41. Okay, so which, let's do it. Let's, let's which do it I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep reminding you is the worst in NBA history. Let's keep going in. Right. Oh, 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 in your opinion, because you you're, no, you don't no, like no, that. No, 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 no. That's in history. That's oh, a okay. Fact. So let's do this. So, when so you, now let's, you, let's when go you to pick this. his record, 50%, 41 and 41 is 50%. Gil, how you win a thousand games, my nigga? Again, can I can I answer ticket? Yeah, go 50%. Is the worst in NBA history for a coach of the year. How did he win a thousand games? Now let's go. How did he win a thousand? Okay, so so now, so let's go to the year before KG and them came. So the year before he only won. I can I can just I can just do it like this because I actually got to go right now. I'm gonna do it like this. Why did hold on? Okay, let me ask you this. Why did he win multiple championships? Doc Rivers. Why did he win multiple championships with KG and them? Why did he win multiple championships with KG and them? A chill. Huh? Why didn't Doc Rivers win multiple championships with KG and and uh, Paul Pierce and them? Ask yourself. Okay, That's... I'm about to tell you. Hold on, I'm about to tell you. Tell first us. of all, first of all, Kevin Garnett got hurt against the Orlando Magic, who ended up going to the playoffs and finals. So KG didn't play that series. That's first of all. You, you remember the KG, the defensive player of the year the year before? They mm -hmm. won 60 games that next year after they won a championship. Mm -hmm. KG got hurt. The the um Matt Orlando Magic end up beating a guy you like LeBron James and went to the NBA Finals and got smoked by Kobe in five. Mm -hmm. Then let's go to the very next year. Very next year he gets KG back, goes to the NBA Finals and they lose in seven games to the Black Mama Kobe Bean Bryant. Mm -hmm. So he would have he would have probably been the three straight NBA Finals. May have won two out of three had had KG would have not got hurt that second year because KG remember he missed the playoffs. That's the year Orlando played Cleveland and they beat LeBron mm -hmm. and them and went to the finals. It's it's weird how you keep removing the second best player every single time in your argument. No, I'm saying KG. Hold on. When we talk about Kevin Garnett, you remove Kevin Garnett from that team. That was the defensive player of the year. He was the one that changed the whole tide of that team. We know that. Okay, so basically, you're saying Doc can only win with a full team and all of his best players playing. That's not true. I'm not saying that. He, okay, okay so he went to hold on. I'm gonna get to you real quick. So he goes to the Clippers, right? He goes to the Clippers. Let, he brings over, see, hold on. He yeah, brings yeah. over CP3, Blake Griffin, mm -hmm. and um and DeAndre Jordan. What was the mm -hmm. knock on Blake Griffin? They said he was soft. What was the knock on CP3 before Doc Rivers even coached? He said he was a choke artist when he was in New Orleans. They said mm -hmm. they called him CP injury and said he was a choke artist before and after Doc Rivers. They called mm -hmm. CP3 a choke artist. That's what that's what they've called him. So is that Doc Rivers' fault that CP3 was hurt no, in damn near every playoff like, series? It, it seems like everything you're talking about has to do with everybody else but the guy. But they was hurt. Is that is, hold on? Is that yeah, every, not everyone, hey, hey, hey! Listen, if you got four superstars and one gets hurt, I will hold. Both you of them were hurt. Hold on, my nigga. Both him and Blake got hurt in the same series. They, oh. they had to put they had to put Matt Barnes in the starting lineup in that series because they both got hurt in the same series. Okay. Look it up. Chris Paul got hurt damn near every single year in the playoffs. Him and him and him and Blake Griffin both got hurt in the same goddamn what, series. What year was that? What, what I mean, that, what, was that the second year, the third year? What 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 year? No do no you no want no no. Every hold on hold on, my nigga. Every year, Chris Paul got hurt in the playoffs. Then okay. two of the years, two of the years, half of those playoff series, Blake Griffin was hurt. Look it up. One, you're talking about a dude who inherits it a team. He inherited the team, the Clippers. Right, but he didn't. But they didn't have uh, Chris Paul and Blake Griffin on them. They had fifty-six wins the year before that, though. No, I'm saying that was with a different squad. Though. They had a fifty-six wins the year before. No, no, that. I'm saying, but that was hold on. But listen, that was with I, listen. Different. But my nigga, that was with this different is, personnel. This is that, the that fact. Was with, this is going to be in brand. I'm saying, but that was a whole different squad. This is going to be one hundred percent fact. You can keep making up all the fucking excuses you want. That's cool. Here's a fact. Out of all the coaches. That you would name in NBA history. Right. I don't give a fuck how you line them up. Doc Rivers has coached the most Hall of Fame players. That's a that lie. Touched the NBA. That's a lie. I can I just, name the other coaches. I just said it was a fucking fact. I can name the other coaches. I just named a fact. I can name the other coaches. We can start with Mike D'Antoni. We, 
we can start with Mike D'Antoni. Let's try it again. Then we can go on. Hold on. We can go from Mike D'Antoni. Before, before, can... you, before you go down this road, I'm going to tell you again. You line oh, okay, up. Okay, okay. Uh, hold on. You're talking about now. You're talking about including now. Okay, okay. Line, up all the coach, now. line up all the coaches in their resume of rosters. Doc Rivers has coached the most Hall of Fame player. People who make the Hall of Fame, he has coached the most of them. And then you just, you better add two more with Giannis and Dame. Okay. He and, he's, and guess what? And, and guess he, what? He's a, he's top, he's, he's top 10 all time in, in coaches wins. And he has won one he's championship. A, oh, all right. Hold on. And, and let me say this to you. Half the coaches, 50% of the coaches that are in the top 10 all time in the wins don't haven't won a championship. I don't hear you having the same smoke for Jerry Sloan. Never won a championship. Had two Hall of Famers. How many Hall of Famers whole, is Jerry had, Sloan hold on, coach? Hold on, but oh, I'm saying is he had a stable team his whole career. He had two I, I, Hall of okay, Famers. Listen, okay. I'm saying, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm saying, but he had two Hall of Famers and a stable team his two. whole career. You, you, it wasn't he had like two he was Hall of Famers. Him. Right, no, I'm saying consistent. Two. But for hold his on, no whole chill. career. No two. chill. Consistent, right, and could never get two. over the hump. Could never Doc get over Rivers the had win. three on teams. He had three on the same teams, multiple teams. He had three bona fide Hall of Famers on the same team. You're talking about a coach who had two for his whole career. Three on the same team. I can keep going. Teams, dog. I, hey, chill. I can keep going, bro. I know you can. You're just going to keep running and blaming the fucking universe. So, why, oh, so, so, why you hey, hey, so, so let me ask you a question then. So why you won't say the same shit about Rick Carlisle? Ain't he living off that one championship? Look at all the talent he coached. Look at all. Who, look at all the skilled Hall of Famers. Who he even coached. mentions? Who even mentions Rick Carlisle, dog? Yo, that's my point. Y'all no give a it. fuck about Rich Carlisle. He don't even be considered in the top ten. So who cares? That's my hold on. But that's my point. My point to you is this, Gil. You say all this shit about Doc being trash, but Doc is one of ten coaches that have won a thousand games. And check this out, Gil. Check this out. Doc is one of three. Percent of coaches in NBA history that won a championship. Do you not know that three percent of the coaches in NBA history have won a championship? Doc is one of those guys. And name me, name me besides Orlando Magic that he got put in a situation where he had to build a team. Well, that's that's like Angeles, hold on, I'm about to get you right now. I'm about to get you right now. The Los that's Angeles, like saying Griffin is a great coach. Right now, I'm about no, to get you that is now. like saying Griffin is a great you coach. Now. You ask me, I'm about to get you right now, my nigga. The LA Clippers. Oh. The LA Clippers went Chris Paul and them left. Games. No, you're not listening. When Chris Paul and them left, he had to rebuild the team. Remember, they made the playoffs that year, and Pat Beverly and them was their best players when they were going against KD and pushed the Golden State Warriors six games in the playoffs. It was him and Tobias Harris, my nigga. Dog, listen, I'm just gonna say it, I and mean, this is how it works. <laughs> Great conversation. <laughs> Walton, right? You know Walton, right? Go ahead. Walton record. Right. When Steve Kerr went out, he has the Golden State Warriors. He he went 24 and 1, and everyone thought he was a great coach. Right. Then you give him a bad team, his coaching shows. Griffin, his resume right now is what? 30 and 13. Had the weakest schedule in the NBA. Number one weakest schedule. And was struggling to beat the worst teams in the league. But his team, his record, because the team he had, he got inherited that team. He didn't build a team from the bottom to the top. Doc Rivers has been put in situations to win. That's a lie, he, bro. He when he went to Orlando, that wasn't a situation to win. That's a lie. When he went to Boston, that was not a situation to win. That's a lie. When he went to the Clippers. That was a situation where they lost the whole team they had before. They didn't have Elton Brand. They didn't have Chris Kamen. They didn't have uh, all the other dudes they had on that squad before. He bought in. They made the trade. Orlando, for Orlando, Orlando before Doc came in. 50, 57, Different 60. team. Completely different team. No, different just, roster. I'm, Penny wasn't there. Uh, Armstrong wasn't 40, there. 40, 41, 33. So, did, so 43. 31, 33, then he gets put on a team, right? So that was his, because he was a new coach, that was his worst team, right? That was his worst team when he got there. Just like he went to Philly, you have a team already in. Just like you come into here, you have a team already here. What you're you not you building your team. You're, you're, not, you're, not go, you're not going to Monty Williams and going you, to the Detroit Pistons you and you're trying to build a team. But Gil, you, Gil, you said on your channel, you said on Gil's Arena on a show, a great show, 
Most y'all don't give us a reading and criticize Ben Simmons. The man went over there with Ben Simmons, bro. Y'all criticize Ben Simmons all the time on the show. Whenever y'all talk about Ben Simmons, you go in. Doc had to go coach a nigga who didn't even want to shoot a layup, bro. Then let's look at Joel and B. What has he done without Doc? Not a damn thing but get hurt every year. Same way he did with Doc. Nigga got hurt in the playoffs. These are facts. <laughs> so you have a 6'10 point guard that's on the all defensive team every year before you got there. You got in Joel and Bede on your team. You have Harrison. What what is that? Um, not Harrison Bar. You have um, what's the, Yo, what's you, the you, hold on? You had he, hold on. This is the guys that he that he had on that team before they got before he got there. Ben Simmons, Joel and B, mm -hmm. Jimmy Butler. Mm -hmm. Goddamn! Uh, no, 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 uh, no, no. When he, got, when he got there, when he got there. No, oh, when he got there, those guys left. When he got there, Jimmy Butler went to Miami. No, when he got there, what right, right. was oh, Okay, when he got there, when he got there, you had uh, Maxi was a rookie, so he wasn't playing that much. But you had Tobias Harris, uh, Ben Simmons, Joel Embiid, and role players. So he had. The team got worse when he went he there. They, they, they didn't have the same. He had Joel Embiid, who averaged 28.5. You had Tobias Harris, who averaged 19. Ben Simmons, who averaged 14, 7, and 7. You had Seth, Seth Curry, that averaged 12. You had Middleton, Milton, that averaged 13. You have a young Maxi. Um, so you have Danny Green, right? Right. You have, you have Danny Green. So you have a team team. You right. get put into a team where the year before that they won, they won, they went 52, 51, 43 wins. So you, you are you are being put on a winning team to win out the gate. Here, this is what you're not taking How, in consideration. Dude? Hold on, ticket. There's there's bottom feeding coaches, meaning they're building coaches, coaches that build teams, right? right. You have playoff coaches, right. you have championship coaches, right. right? There's three different levels of coaches in the NBA. Right. So Doc Rivers is considered a playoff championship type of coach. So he is never going to go on a team that's rebuilding. That's bullshit. He, he went to every team he went to, except for what you call it, except for Philly and, and Milwaukee, were rebuilding. He, when he went to Orlando, they were rebuilding because they lost all the players from the year before. He when he went to the Clippers, they were rebuilding because they lost all the players from the year before. Orlando, dude, it was his first go around as a coach. Now the Doc Rivers you are fucking celebrating about right. He only gets jobs when they need to go the extra mile. That's his that's his job. Mark Jackson is the building coach. You give him right. bottom feeding teams and get them going. Build it. I agree. When they get going, you replace him with a team with a coach that can go the extra mile. So someone like Steve Kerr can't coach teams that has no he doesn't know how to put structure. So he's not a great coach then. There's different coaches type. No, ask, no, 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 no. Stand on that. Stand on that. So Steve Kerr ain't a great coach then, right? He can only coach Steph Curry because I agree with you on that. No, I think he, he can only coach. Team. He can only coach veteran type guys. Right. No, so if he would have went took the Knicks job instead of the Warriors job, his ass would have been out of the league in three years, right? Which Knicks job? Remember, remember when Phil Jackson wanted him to come coach the Knicks, but they had to go get Derek Fisher because he turned on the Knicks job and went around and got to go to State Warriors job, and then and then Phil Jackson went and hired Derek Fisher instead. Yes. Right. If he would have went and coached that Knicks team, he would have been out of the league in three years. Yes. So he would have been right. So the only reason why you're talking, we talking about him like that. So Gil, this is what I want to say. No, but Greg no, keep Popovich, finishing. You got to finish. Hold, hold the on, Gil. You can't just. Yes. This uh, is what yes. I'm saying. Greg Popovich, Don Nelson, Lenny Wilkins, Jerry Sloan, Pat Riley, George Carl, Phil Jackson, Doc Rivers, Larry Brown, and Rick Adelman are the top ten winningest coaches in NBA history. Think about this. But you don't never say you would never dog, you say that. Hold on, hold on, I'm gonna say this to you. You would never say nothing about yeah. Rick Adelman. Rick Adelman coached coach more Hall of Famers. Rick Adelman, dog. Right, but he coached more Hall of Famers. You talking about Hall of Famers? He didn't coach the most Hall of Famers. Are you talking about? Who did he coach in uh Portland? Do you know I've Googled this? Have you Googled it or are you just saying it off the jump? Man, you using I'm Have saying you, you're Googled including what I'm saying, or did, are you coming on the top? No, I'm saying, but you're including this year, so I give you that. 
I'm including every year. You yeah, have yeah. No, 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 no. This year, as of this year. Think about all the players that he's coached. Think about what I'm saying. The Chris Pauls, that you got to think about these guys. So when I say it, I'm saying it from a fact. So about Larry Brown? It, I Googled every player that he's it's, ever coached, and I came up with who is leading. Is Larry Brown overrated? He's got Larry Brown has less wins than Doc Rivers total. Yes, he's coached more years well, well, than Doc Rivers, when you say, and he only has oh, one listen, championship. Oh, you, you're not uh, you're not trying to understand. You're just trying to go. No, I'm not. I'm just I'm, I'm asking you a question. I want you to keep the same energy so, with with Doc so, Rivers. I mean, with Larry Brown. So, okay, with Rick so Adelman, with so, George Carl. So hold. Doc. Okay, we're gonna take. Um, let's take Popovich. Right. His coach can re- his coaching career started with what team? The Spurs. How good were the Spurs? They had Tim Duncan. I mean, they had David Robinson, bro. Tim Duncan, David Robinson, right? No, no, no. no. Well, they had David Robinson before Tim Duncan. So he yeah, coached so David they, Robinson. And then so Tim they had Duncan a great coached. team. Yeah. So they had a great team. Yeah. So because they had a great team, great coaching. Now we see what his – he is good enough to coach. Right. Terrible – I mean – Great, great talent. Right. He's not great with young talent, as right. you can see. Right. So there's coaches who can only coach great players. They can't coach mediocre guys. But like Doc Phil Jackson, you he can coach both. Like Phil Jackson can't, couldn't coach horrible team. He is not a builder coach. That's there's not builder true. coaches. That's not true. Phil Jackson rebuilt the Lakers. Just when, when listen, Kobe went back, hold on. I'm just about to, to, to understand right what I'm saying. This is not a debate. I'm this about is to prove it to you, my nigga. I'm this is information. If I'm hiring a coach right. and I have the Boston, I mean, not the Boston, if I have Detroit Pistons, right? there is a group of coaches that, that will put structure in their team. Right. They might not win. <laughs> they might not win, right. but the, the the players themselves will be better and ready for the next coach. So that means the coach that coached them to get them ready for the next coach, their record would be horrible. That doesn't mean the coaching is horrible. The record is horrible, not their coaching style. They had to build the confidence, uh-huh. the structure, and the right. behavior Right for that. Too. Now, when you now when you go to the next group, right, that is a coach who can come in, enhance it. Then when you get out of that, and they're looking at like let's say Boston Celtics, right, right. I got the you. Boston Celtics now, right. There's only a group that that's now that's a Doc Rivers, right. That's Pop. That's a Steve Nash. I mean, yeah, mm-hmm. a Steve, um, Steve Kerr. Steve, Steve Kerr. Kerr. That's that group, right. That's how you have to look at who's good and who's not. Right. There's so, but certain my, hold on, but then let me answer that. That can only go. So I can't put a uh, uh I can't give you um Stan Van Gundy and then put Stan Van Gundy on Boston Celtics. I can't put Stan Van Gundy on um the Denver Nuggets. Right. He will fuck your team up. Okay, so but so okay, so Gil. But you can let, put let, let, let me let, let me let me respond to one thing you said. I disagree with what you said about Phil because remember when Shaq got traded, they had to rebuild that team. When Shaq got traded, that team got torn down. He had Kobe and had to rebuild with Kobe and role players. So they had Kobe, Chris Mim, uh, Kwame. Uh, they had Smush Parker, Sasha Vujicic on that team. He rebuilt that team into a playoff team. So Phil Jackson shows you he didn't have to just go to contenders to rebuild a team. He rebuilt the team from the bottom and they won a championship. Let's look at Larry wait, Brown. Wait, Larry wait, Brown wait, wait, you. Hold, hold on, hold on, dog. I ain't capping, my nigga. I'm telling the what? truth. Didn't the feel. Team, didn't, the team wait, 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 wait. When Shaq got Jack. traded, when Shaq got traded, they went to being a worse team. And then they had to rebuild the team. Remember, they missed didn't the playoffs. Didn't feel Jackson get fired, and then they no, got. No, he quit. No, no, no. He he, he quit. Fired. He quit. No, no. I'm saying for the Lakers. Fired. He, he really quit because he was remember he had the thing going on with Genie, so he quit. Yeah, yeah, no, he got fired, sir. No, um, that was he didn't get Kobe fired off. Wanted him, Kobe wanted him out. That's not true. Facts. 
Phil said that. Phil said that. I know what I know what Phil said. Rudy T came over there. Kobe right. fired Rudy T after the after the Warriors game. Mm -hmm. Fired his ass too. I agree with you on that. And then, then when Phil came back the next year, the, the following, that's when they started to win. Kobe wanted to be on his. No, but they was team. bad. No, no, I'm saying, but they was trash with Phil too at first. Remember that? Yes, they were. When, when Phil came back, when Phil came back, Phil came back off of um. Not Rudy T, but the other coach. So Phil came back off the other coach that had taken over from in between, and they was trash then. He Phil came back and rebuilt that team. Also, let me say this to you too, uh, 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 Gil. Uh, Larry Brown has shown you he can rebuild teams and coach championship level talent. He did that in the NBA where he went to teams that was not good, built them up. You understand what I'm saying? And took them to a championship level team, and he's shown you he can take teams who had elite level talent and win championship, or win a championship, but he only won one. Nobody cooks Larry Brown, says he's overrated and talks shit about him like they do. Doc Rivers. Says, Hold on, let me give you this name, Gil. This is the name I want to give you. Lenny Tom, Wilkins. You just, you just, oh, God, I don't give a fuck about these guys you keep talking about because they're not considered goats. They so are. No one, these so, are the top coaches. Hold on. Hold on. Hey, hold, on hold on. Hold on. This is what this is the problem. The only reason you attack someone is when they get put in a certain category, right? No one tears down um, Kevin Garnett's legacy, right? right? No one cares because he's not considered top five. So no one gives a fuck about it, right? He's just played his career. If you start yelling, Kevin Garnett is the best power forward to ever play the game, what happens then? Uh, people will start arguing with you about him and Tim Duncan. Yeah, so people will start nitpicking. As a, so the guys you're naming, no one talks about them because those coaches are not considered a great coach in the sense of I top five coaches. When you throw oh, Doc okay, name top five. There, okay, I, okay, I see you. Okay, Gil, I see you. No, hey, I, I got I, hey, top five. Hey, ticket, I got to go, though, dog. Hey, much love to you, bro. Hey, man, you hey. Y'all hey, go it. subscribe. Hey, hey we're going to do this again. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot you my information, bro. Okay. Hey, listen, man. Hey, uh, uh, text me your number uh, in the in, in, uh, in I got the you. I got All you. All right, man, boy. All right, dog. Man, hey, shout out to No Chill Guild, man. Shout out to my boy Kwame Brown, Bust Life, too, man. You understand what I'm saying? This is how we can do it over here, man. We can do big boy shit, man. We, we and him have a heated discussion. It don't got to be no beef. It don't got to be no problem. This is how y'all see it can go down, bro. Set the standard, man. You understand what I'm saying? And that's a and shout out to the brother for coming through, man. Showing love. That's what I like about Gil. Gil will pull up on anybody, man. That's what I like about Kwame Brown. He can pull up on anybody. Ain't nobody got to be no air. There's room for everybody on here to do their thing, man. And so next time we come, we're going to get something else again. I see my boy Herm. I'm seeing right now, just came through. Herm had a question. I'm going to ask Gil that the next time we get on. I'm going to ask Gil about that. And shout out to No Chill, man. And shout out to everybody else to subscribe to the channel, man. He came through, man. And we did. And I'm, he think I'm bullshit. I'm going to pull up to uh, Gil's Arena. I'm going to pull up to Gil's Arena in person. You understand what I'm saying? So salute to him, man. And um, again, man, shout out to Kwame Brown, Bust Life, man. We'll get him back on here, man. And we're going to get something. We're going we gonna to cook something for y'all. Believe that. You understand what I'm saying? So salute to everybody watching this video, man. Like, share, subscribe. I'm going to the podcast right now. If y'all want to see me, I'm going to the podcast show right now to cook on the Lakers game. I was watching the Lakers game as I'm talking to uh, Gil. So I'm getting ready to uh, go do the post game on my podcast. Click the link at the top. Check out the podcast show, man. Salute to my boy, man. Kwame Brown, Bus Life. Everybody else watching the channel. No chill, Gil just came on here, man, and told y'all what it is. Laid the law down. You understand? Know and I'm going to holler, man. And nigga, holler back. Y'all catch me on the podcast show. I'm going there now. Link pinned at the top of the comment section.